slow. Good. Tilt back. Good. Tilt back a little bit. Good. Well, we have a crew here today. Yeah, we brought the <laughs> army. Watch out, folks. You think Alyssa and I get a lot done. They're not too traumatized because they're back from they, war. They came willingly. <laughs> <laughs> we actually really appreciate their help. We yep. really do. It's been nice to visit with people, kind of like see old friends type of thing. So, yep. um, yeah, so today ICF day. It's going to take us a while to get rolling, but we've already kind of talked over uh, what we did, how we did it, some of the things we learned, how it all works, that type of stuff. And now it's time for action. So pretty the, exciting. Yeah, the I think, ICF stuff starting. I think I'm not sure how much visible, well, like visible progress today. I think if we oh, can yeah. get the first or two courses on, that'll be a great day and anything plus that's a bonus do you feel the same way yeah it's a lot of like back and forth we need to get the first two rows stacked and then we've got to do membrane and drainage so it's going to be like a bunch of icfs and then kind of backtrack to drainage and then yep. we'll start going on icfs again so yeah visible visible progress will be negligible today but it'll still feel good to get some icfs done oh yeah i'm pretty excited yeah do these pop up pretty nice um, they seem like they do. these ones are already put together. together i think we should make a cool pattern out of light form <laughs> So like it looks good, you know, because it's going to be a long time before we have like real sighting. It'd be fun if you had a lot of extra of these to just write messages to space. Send more bacon. So one of the concerns we had was whether or not we placed the rebar efficiently. <laughs> so as not to oh, yeah. the forms. Yeah. Oh, it's on the money. Wow. I think it's on the money. Try what do you think? It needs to turn just a hair. So we are going to have to come up. No, not on every corner. Uh, maybe on every corner. Yep, because we put the rebar right in the middle of the corner, which is exactly where the tie is. It doesn't need to be removed, right? It just needs to be um, cut. Corners, we're actually gonna like flip flop them when we stack them. So we have the short corner here, but the next one we'll flip it upside down so that it's staggered. You're doing the five inch cut? Yes. Or ish. Ish. Five inch. <laughs> Is this a new block or one that we already cut off? Uh, we had to get a new block because the old one we used was like half an inch short. Yep. So we wanted it to be, I know. Yep. We'll save it for up higher though. Um, I think we ordered quite block. a few extra blocks That's for this problem. Probably good. <laughs> yep. I think before we get crazy, we need to get that rebar in there because we're going to be banging on this thing when we get that rebar in there. There's no point in trying to get it perfect first. Jesse's the project manager, which gets tough because Jesse's the only one here that really knows what he's doing. Ish. Ish. So More than above average knowledge. Yes. Yeah. So now I'm just checking notes. I feel like with this first course, especially take our time and slow down. Yep. Make sure that we're not, you know, overlooking or forgetting a step here. Yep. So. Yum. 
That's a good one. Um, which means the whole building's gonna be that way. So everything's gonna be outside of our lines because it's four sided, it's exactly the same. So Michelle was like, um, Jesse, the block's not on the line. And I'm like, how's that even possible? Like, it's exactly dead on. The lines are dead on. So after a bit of research, we finally concluded that the blocks are not exactly four feet. They're like three thirty seconds or a sixteenth over four feet. So as you stack, by the time you get to the other end, you're going to be over your line by... A little bit not much maybe half an inch three quarters of an inch <laughs> and there's no way that what 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 controls that is these keys in order for these blocks to sit on top of each other they have to be the correct distance so this is what happened when we tried to stack the wall so we were having to push the walls out on each side roughly half an inch expanding the square that our structure is built on so that all of our keys will fit and that has to do with the the block being ever so slightly too long added up over the length yep. of the wall so we're going to be attaching all the blocks and then we're going to be fudging on each side the distance we'll split the overrun on each side of the wall so that the square remains square but we can stack blocks We just stuck the the level on our forms for the first time. Mm -hmm. And in theory, if we did our work right, it should be level. And yeah. how does it look? Man, I don't know. I'm sure you can get more precise, but it might be a 16th, probably a 30 second. That's pretty good. Not bad. Cross a corner. That's a usually a good sign. Working on the buttress on the back side, and we're trying to figure out how the T block works to understand if we can just bend the rebar around the corner or if we need to do like cut and bent pieces. So I think I see how it just sits on the form. So this is your bottom block, top block. Oh, so that's gonna have to be cut. And the corners there, trimmed. And then this just sits over those. We're gonna go ahead and mark where our braces have been cut because we've done so many in the corner here. We think we're gonna wanna go back through and add our own bracing, maybe with wire or something, to reduce our chances of a blowout happening. That's pretty it's sticky. Like, pretty sticky? So no. you're going to pull <laughs> the sticky paper off as you go. Yeah, that's... You're going to try. That's going to stick to it, yeah. Well... Uh. Pause, 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 pause. Pass. Can I do anything to help Michelle? No. No. Not just yet. Okay. So, it's a new day. Video tanked yesterday. Liz and I were really proud of ourselves. We'd done a tremendous amount of preparation and planning to start the ICFs. And we were really excited for the first row. Everything went pretty good. And then we started putting the second row on. And um, we just started running into problems. 
and we don't even understand whether these are a problem or not. But so I thought I would share just a couple of the um, bottlenecks that we ran into, and um, maybe and uh, kind of share or enlighten a little bit on you know things that we didn't anticipate but became a major pain point. So this gap is there because these blocks were cut to fit within the chalk lines that Alyssa and I so lovingly spent forever getting perfect. And they fit perfect, everything was great. There's no gap here. Then we went to stack the second row and these keyways did not lock in because this keyway was clear over here. So we either had to move the keyway in one inch to access this one or out one inch to access this one. The reason this became an issue is that these keyways are two inches apart. So these walls have to move in two inch increments. I guess I'll just squash anyone who wants to argue because they're like, you could cut anywhere in here and make the wall fit, you're right. The only way to make that happen would be to make one single cut from top to bottom of the wall and shrink the structure. We're not gonna do that. So what happened was our walls got an inch wider. So all of the effort we made to put these chalk lines down and the chalk lines are gone. We decided to average the overage on each side by allowing the building to run a half an inch over on each side. But this happens all the way around because the building is a square. Now our building, instead of being 36 feet 8 inches, is 36 feet 9 inches. And I feel like a complete fool for not checking this information. But it turns out these ICFs are not perfectly four feet. They're four feet and a little bit. So this block is four feet and three thirty seconds. Now that three thirty seconds doesn't sound like much, but there's nine blocks in a row. You add that up over the course of the building and the building grows by 27, 30 seconds or more. But it started to snowball. This horizontal rebar, according to the drawings, must be two inches from the inside of the wall. Well, that's a problem now because the wall has moved out. So now this horizontal rebar is running into this vertical rebar. So in order to push this wall out, we were having to bend these rebars over. Well, we found that out as a solution and we made it work, but it became a problem around the entire building. So we spent hours bending rebar and trying to move the wall. On top of that, our chalk lines were no longer useful. So instead of being able to simply lay the block and not have to really worry, are the blocks straight or not? Now we had to find a way to make the block straight without the chalk lines. So what we did was run a string around the outside of the walls and use that as a reference from corner to corner to true up the walls. Sure. All of this stuff is doable, but what frustrated us yesterday is we spent all this time doing this instead of building walls. Another challenge we ran into, and this is not an, an issue with the product so much, we had to put rebar on the lower tier of the ICF block. It needed to be eight inches from the footing. It turns out getting rebar into the ICFs below the upper bracing is very difficult. In order to make that feasible, we had to cut the bracing. The good news is because our building is in fact a square, the walls are spot on, one inch too large all the way around. And because we averaged the distance on each side, the building is square. So what we've decided to do is to stop. And we wanna just talk this over with our engineer and with the company Lightform just to see like what is it that we're, what are we doing? What's, what's going on here? Why is this happening? Because Alyssa and I have put so much patience and love into making sure that these walls are level and square and true. And we're talking to like the 16th, if not the, the 32nd. And here we've just, boom, we're off by an inch now. And what we don't understand is how that inch is gonna, gonna bite us in the butt as we go up. We feel like it can be accommodated throughout the building, but maybe not. The reason that's an issue is I showed you how quickly that one inch started to snowball on us. Pretty soon the rebars are running into each other and uh, you know other issues started to come up. So that's kind of where we decided to leave it. <clears throat> Today we're going to kind of do a half day. We're going to kind of uh, focus on other things. We have a lot of other tasks that have kind of accumulated on us. Anna's here. She was going to help us do all the walls, but she's instead going to be helping me get all these rocks. We've got a lot of big rocks that are stuck in here 
from when I excavated for the water line. And then we're also gonna check to see if the birdies uh, are all grown up and gone from their nest in the cistern hole. And if they are, great time to get that cistern hole backfilled. So a little bit of a departure from what we were hoping to do, but we're gonna keep moving forward. Uh, tomorrow's Monday morning, so we'll be able to hopefully get the engineer on the phone as well as light form and just kind of work through this problem and find out how big of a problem it is if it's even a major problem at all or if this is just par for the course um, so we'll probably pick this this task back up tomorrow otherwise we'll try to get some other work done just about to start uh, backfilling the cistern hole. I checked to see if the birdies are gone and they are gone. The nest is empty. And then the engineer called, which surprised me, but I was extremely happy because it's a Sunday. The uh, response went something like this. As frustrating as it is where the product is not exact is actually fairly common. Apparently this is also an issue with SIP panels, which are supposed to be four by eight, which is absolutely maddening and requires modification to make them fit on an otherwise precise structure. So the end uh, conversation is that the building being one inch small on the, or one inch large on the foundation will be okay. When we get up to the sill plates, we will correct the uh, size to be exact. Again, I wanna share something that my brother taught me. He used to take every board that he would get on a job site and measure them, and he would set aside boards that didn't match. Not every single board, but generally speaking, he would measure every single board. And he taught me, he said, this, these, these pieces of wood are never accurate, never. They're always different. Even from one end of the board to the other, they're different. So he said, measure everything, because how can you possibly build something that's two dimension if all of your materials are inconsistent. This is not like us pointing the finger at Lightform, not at all. Uh, we do plan on talking to Lightform just to kind of inform them about our situation and talk to them and see what they think of it. But this is just a reality of materials. I'm glad this is happening to us early because it really drills into my mind that when our doors show up, our uh, underlayment shows up, our eye joists show up, everything that comes onto this construction site must be measured and checked for dimension. Spoiler alert, I just wanted to throw this in this video so there's no misunderstandings. It turns out we did not follow Lightform's instructions. They're pretty doggone clear, but this guy researched far too many different companies who produce ICF and they all do it differently. And as it turns out, our blocks could have easily fit between our chalk lines. We just wanted to straighten that out in case anyone actually is watching this and kind of is confused about why we were stuck on two inch increments. It, the only reason we thought that that should work is because our building is actually in two inch increments, which very few buildings are. So it's an understandable mistake, but we wanted to clear that up. If we would have more carefully read the instructions here, there's going to be a center of wall common seam. So basically you stack your corners where the chalk lines are, and then you start stacking block to the middle of the wall. When you reach the point where the blocks don't fit anymore, you sever the blocks, which I actually mentioned earlier in the video, and I thought, there's no way that's gonna work. That would weaken the wall. But after talking to Lightform, of course, this is what they instruct you to do. So this was a major oversight on our part, and this one small uh, mistake could have saved us a tremendous amount of time and effort. Ridiculous little scenarios like this are one of the reasons that we chose Light for him. We knew they had good customer service, they've been around for a long time, they have a great reputation, and we thought, hmm, we're owner builders, we're probably gonna screw this up. It's, it's really important that we have a company who will not just stand behind their product, but if we get stuck with something really stupid, they'll help us out. And thankfully, one quick phone call to them and got this sorted out, Casey was like, you have a common seam, right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, we're good. It turns out we didn't have a common seam. I tried to explain it and Casey's like, I don't think you have a common seam, buddy. And I'm like, oh my gosh, no way. So customer service was a huge uh, thing for owner builders and we're thankful that we have that. Okay, now that that's clear, where were we? We do need to make a small adjustment to the buttress because of a slightly deviating line of uh, th uh, number six dowels. 
we need to have three inches minimum here between the edge of the concrete and this dowel. And otherwise, we're back on track. Next, we're going to be installing the membrane on the back side from the step downs and all the way around. Yesterday, we started installing the membrane and had a bit of struggles. We'd been told that this stuff is stickier and snot and it's difficult to apply. So we learned a lot applying that piece and we'll try to apply some of those lessons as we apply it to the back sides here. We've decided that the rest of the day, because we've got the go ahead to start working, but it's again hot today, we're gonna take a little bit of a break, a breather this afternoon and come back and start over. But sounds like from here on out, we got the go ahead to move on the drainage system, get the membrane installed, the drain tile, drain rock, filter fabric. So we'll check back in a little bit later and hopefully get this project moving again. Yesterday, we actually the night before, we got a text message from our concrete friend, and we knew he was gonna be doing a slab in the next few days. Turns out he did it yesterday. So we had plans to work on getting the membrane and drain tile and stuff in. We ended up spending uh, a little over eight hours working on a slab, which was super exciting for Alyssa and I. It was exhausting, but we got some experience, which was really cool. And that's gonna be massive when it comes to mostly kind of picking who to help us with the slab that we're gonna do and then coming up with a strategy. Uh, we've spent a little time talking about this morning and it sounds like we are both in agreement that we need to have somebody here who is very savvy with concrete more as oversight actually purely as oversight sunday evening after a brief swim we did some work together to try to figure out a reliable way to apply this blue skin membrane this is a 60 mil waterproof membrane in a nutshell we actually have two membranes this is a three foot wide membrane and what we're doing here is uh membraning up from the bottom of the footing over the footing and then up the wall about two feet and the theory behind this is that once the walls are poured we will actually come back with a wider membrane which is a four foot membrane and reach down the wall and overlap these two membranes and i need to double check there's actually a specification in the international concrete code for how much these membranes need to overlap the reason we're doing that is we want to get the drain tile and the rock and filter fabric in now. Because doing that once the walls are poured, we feel like is gonna be way more challenging. I'm sure we've covered all that about 15 times in our videos, but we're starting fresh because it's been a couple of days since we've worked on this. We also have a lot of cleanup to do, kind of uh, little fixes to kind of get the project back to a reset. I'm gonna be working on this buttress we need to move this buttress over one inch. I may do some measuring here to see if we can move it over two inches because that would allow us to do a perfect chamfer here. The, the problem, the bottleneck, is this number six rebar must be three inches in from the form. Right now it's two inches. Ideally, this is centered over the buttress footing, which it is right now, but when we placed these rebar, they slowly migrated toward the inside of where the buttress is gonna be located. So after discussing this with the engineer, we've agreed to move this form about one inch over, which will put us at a happy spot with all of those dowels. It's gonna take quite a bit of work. Uh, something that's clear with when working with these ICFs, because of getting the rebar down inside, zip tying, all of these things that when you have to undo anything, it turns into quite the substantial project. It's not a matter of just take that block out. There's a lot of rebar that has to come out because everything's very intertwined. I do have to say when we first were researching ICFs and they said that all you have to do is glue the ICF to the footing with this kind of spray foam adhesive, I thought to myself, Really? Like, that's enough? That's good enough? And I will have to say that at first, the adhesive almost seems like kind of cute. I don't even know what the word is. Like not even remotely close to adequate. 
but after it hardens uh, 30 to 45 minutes or even an hour later and of course a couple days later you can see that this adhesive is holding these blocks fine in fact if you try to move this wall at all it will not move I mean you could bash into it of course and dislodge the adhesive but you know applied sparingly across the entire wall incredible holding power Alyssa is hard at work on getting some videos out for you guys we're quite a bit behind as always but she's been a very hard worker and we're very thankful that she spends so much time making the videos fun and interesting believe me she has hours of footage to chew through to get it down to something that's not long and boring so I'm gonna be working on this stuff and then hopefully later she can join me it's definitely gonna take two of us to get the membrane on the outside here it also looks like we overlooked some of the frost protection on the footing over here on the east side um, it's really hard over here because the dirt the the dirt is so powdery that getting the footing clean clean enough uh, long enough to get the foam to adhere out here is just a nightmare. It's like just pure silt. I forgot to mention, I knew this was gonna happen. We have been very fortunate slash unfortunate that we've had long spell of dry weather. It's been very hot, we've been miserable, we whine about it in every single video, but it has been very conducive to getting this project done. Part of the reason we're pushing to get through the footing and the walls and the slab, I guess the concrete, is so that weather does not end up creating a problem for this project and it looks like the next two to three days we have thunderstorms in the forecast there's no clouds and the weather says the chance of precipitation is none but we all know what thunderstorms mean they could mean torrential downpours in a very isolated area so we're back under the gun we do have some family that's coming into town which is lovely we love visitors it's always hard to take breaks and enjoy life we're not really sure what that balance is or if there even is one I mean, at this point, the balance is getting the house dried in before winter. We also have some wonderful friends that we really appreciate. They've been very, very helpful. They're camping this weekend. They've invited us to join them, take a break from the heat, and just spend a little time dipping our toes in the water. I think we're gonna take them up on that offer, but between now and then, go time. So I sat down and took a break. I was looking for the documentation from Henry on their blue skin membrane. And I'm glad I looked that up. Uh, found some super helpful information. And then I had an idea. I'll get back to the membrane in a second. This in-wall bracing, which is these ladder looking pieces of metal, they slide down into the ICF once the wall's built. Their job is to true up the wall. So instead of kind of having this jog, 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 jog as you assemble blocks, they straighten the wall out. Well, this block or this support or brace wouldn't go in. Everything's too tight. And it perplexed me, kind of irritated me. I was a little frustrated because on top of all the other million problems we've been having, now our in-wall bracing doesn't fit. So I measured the block and the block's about seven and three quarters on the inside, which doesn't make sense because it's supposed to be a true eight inch block. So the gap inside is supposed to be eight inches. 
and our in-wall bracing is about eight and an eighth. So it should fit, but it should fit snug, which is what it's supposed to do to create the proper spacing. Well, I had all of our workshop attendees go through and zip tie each block to the block next to it and the block below it. And they quickly figured out that if you zip tied them too tight, you'd end up pulling on these internal ties and the net result is that the wall starts to collapse on itself, like this. Turns out, all that zip tying, I haven't quite tested this yet, but this is what was keeping this in-wall bracing from fitting. So, I've just spent about an hour undoing your work, guys. Sorry, I think you are supposed to zip tie blocks, but the order in which you do these tasks is so important. It looks like we need to put the in-wall bracing in first, which creates the trueness and squareness and everything, then you can zip tie because you can't zip tie too tight once the in-wall bracing is in. I need to reread Lightform's documentation because I felt like I've really combed this stuff over very carefully and I've tried to really make a solid workflow. But so far we've run into several problems where we're doing the right things, but we're doing them in the wrong order. And in the end, we keep going backwards having to fix mistakes. Now well, this is looking nice and dry and clean down here, so I think I'll go ahead and get that foam installed. Well, I had a failed attempt at installing the foam on the footing here. And I hadn't actually gotten to this wall just yet. I've been working on truing up the walls. Just to restate, our chalk line is no good. We spent a lot of time chalk lining and acrylicing that. And since the building grew by one inch, the chalk lines are no good. Which means installing the block just got a whole lot more difficult. Because now we're basically trying to square the building again, make sure the corners are square, and then we have to make sure that the walls are straight. What tipped me off that we needed to work on this more was that when I went to square this buttress ICF to the wall, this ICF was going away. And in looking down this footing, this gap between the wall and the footing was growing immensely by the time it got down here. When we ran a string on this building, and it was very hard to see because you're leaning over the block and trying to look down over the block, which makes it impossible. So I have been running a string on the inside from corner to corner and then truing the wall. This involved removing all the insulation, truing up the wall, and then re-securing the wall. I went to apply the foam over here, and the foam is too wide because this wall is not true. And it looks like it's bowing out here in the middle, maybe upwards of half an inch. Because I'm not in this for profit, and I'm trying to learn to be disciplined and apply the things that we've learned about our timber framing, timber framing workshop. Looks like we're gonna be unstacking this second row here, and then we'll remove that adhesive, and we'll make our best effort to get this wall trued up. Even if that foam on the outside of the footing doesn't fit perfectly, it should fit a whole lot better. I have to say that this is a very satisfying stage. I think a lot of people at this point would be very frustrated and maybe even bitter or angry. And I'm, I do have frustration, but it's more of a motivating type of frustration. I want this to be as right as it can be. So Liz is gonna come help me and we'll make the wall good.
Alyssa did a beautiful job getting our second row buttress connection made here. Took a lot of kind of just figuring out to get our common seam over here in the placement and make sure all of our dowels are where they need to be. And then we inserted our rebar, got all of our bends made, and we've got most all of the second row stacked. The reason we needed two rows again is to install the membrane. The membrane is gonna start somewhere around here on the back side of the block and go down the face onto the footing. We learned a couple things about the in-wall bracing and I was right. I took all of these uh, horizontal zip ties off that were doing this and I'll be darned if the in-wall bracing fits. So definitely learning a lot about process. And then I got all this in-wall bracing in, real proud of myself, and realized I forgot to put the rebar in. Our plan calls for rebar at eight inches and then at a one quarter and one half and three quarters the height of the wall and the top of the wall. Our frost wall, which is here, is not actually in our plan. It's an as-built. So we're gonna change the rebar schedule just a little bit and double up on the rebar here. So we'll actually be starting our quarter of the height wall rebar on this row, which means that there's gonna be some extra rebar there. No biggie deal. So before Alyssa and I do the membrane, I'm gonna work on getting the rebar and the wall bracing in here, which is gonna make this wall a lot more rigid so that when we're monkeying around on it, it doesn't move and wiggle too much. Moving right along, we got the rest of the foam foamed to the footing, undid some of the foam on the walls and we got those all true. And now I think we're ready for the waterproof membrane, right? Yep. Yesterday we figured out a technique that worked pretty well, we're gonna try it again, where we pre-cut a strip that was four inches. Alyssa already did that. Then we cut a secondary strip. Basically, we pull the membrane back over the wall and remove the secondary strip, which is cut to the height of the footing. And then we adhere that while the paper remains on the very bottom. And then finally, we turn over the footing part, remove the paper, tuck it firmly into the footing and we're done. Worked pretty good yesterday. Okay, go for a ride. Okay, come on. Bugaboo, are you riding on a magic membrane? <laughs> hey. Look at him, he doesn't even care. This is the last exit. The last good exit. There's no on ramps after this, Bugaboo. Pretty big rock, Bugaboo. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, it's time to get off. You can only be cute for the camera for so long. Hey. Oh my goodness. So make a face that gets clicks. Hey, make a face that gets clicks. So that's pretty good. <laughs> um, that's a pretty good angle. <laughs> He's air needing, Mom. Look at you. Oh, that was a cute one. <laughs> Good. Or you tell me when you're good. Booyah. I think that works really well, do you? Yeah. <laughs> so we did like an inch to attach it to our blue line and then we tossed it over the edge and we taped it as we went. 
If you guys want to smell what we smell right now, just think of a fresh paved job. When you're driving through a construction zone, the stuff smells like a fresh asphalt pour. Get too close. Remember what happened to Michelle's arm. Oh yeah, should have got that on film. I can't yep. believe how static. Like, why was this crazy static? Yep, something it's about so it's crazy. Got crazy static. Can you see my hair? Hold on. Can we let it hang? I think so. We're very, very close. Okay, let it hang. Good. I think this is our best one yet. Yep. Looks so good. Oh, wow. Pretty good. Yep. Well, it's nothing to write home about, but Alyssa's methods work. So we can keep going on membrane. We, there's a very slim chance we'll get this done tonight. So we need to do a little bit of cleaning on the footing over here. Um, and then dig out a little bit of dirt that's fallen in, or I think it got pushed in. Alyssa's going to troop her on and cut another membrane, I think. Should we stop? What do you think? How hungry are you? Starving Marvin? I'm hungry, but I don't know. It'd be nice to... It'd be really nice to be done, like we're getting behind. And there's yeah. thunderstorms in the forecast. That's kind of why we're worried now. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. The membrane's definitely a big fish. And we're moving, we're moving pretty good right now, whatever that means. We also lost the productivity of pretty much the entire weekend, so. And a whole day today, backtracking. Mm -hmm. That's why we're behind schedule, which there isn't even a schedule. We're just behind on a schedule exactly. that we don't even have. Cozy. Oh my goodness, you are stinking cute. <laughs> You're a little camera whore, you know that? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Let's see, how do we start this video? I think this video starts with me wasting seven hours chasing details related to our waterproof membrane. The summation is everybody has a different opinion about how to waterproof a foundation. Henry, which is a company who makes the blue skin membrane, specifies five different products that you use. And it is my fault that we did not do more research before we applied this membrane. But apparently, you're supposed to prime everything with an adhesive. It's never mentioned anywhere, not from the people who sold it to us, which I'm not passing the buck, I'm just saying, it's never mentioned. You're supposed to put a fillet, which is a little chamfer, at the footing to wall connection because the membrane does not want to tuck into that corner. It wants to gap the corner, just like everything that's sheet related, like contact paper. You're supposed to use some sort of sealant on the edges, terminations, corners, etc., overlaps. Funny, you can't find any of these products at the places that sell the membrane. And it just so happens we happen to run into a local builder who I know builds with ICFs and does basements. Asked him what he did. He said, sometimes I just use patches of membrane and I use that to seal the corners and good enough. So I spoke with Henry, the company that makes the membrane and they only offer one product that they recommend for the membrane. Can't find that product anywhere. Somehow the only place I could find that product is walmart.com. Alyssa and I have spent over an hour in this heat looking at our work trying to wrap our heads around whether or not our basement's going to leak. At this point we have a pretty rough situation. We either cut the membrane we've already put on at the footing or and wall joint, put in a fillet and then put on an additional layer of membrane. Total cost, $300, which for the cost of this home and the effort, it's cheap. We're also not getting the best 
contact or adhesion between the concrete and the membrane at the footing on the vertical face of the footing ironically but apparently most people don't do that and a lot of yeah. these companies don't even recommend it so the building code says from the top of the footing to the top of the grade fine henry says you should go down the footing four inches on the vertical surface so basically there's about a million different opinions on how one should wrap one's foundation. All I care is, is it gonna leak? So Alyssa and I have been scratching our heads, making phone calls, and trying to find the answer. We don't know that there is an answer. It's more a matter of what you decide is good for you. We did talk to Lightform. Casey was very helpful. He offered quite a few suggestions because they obviously work with Lightform. Turns out one of the biggest struggles of ICFs is that the number of products that are not compatible with foam. So even if we could find some of these sealant products, etc., they don't work with the foam. I even found a couple of caulking products which are rated for the application that we need to, to do. But after talking with the company's technical support, you're not allowed to use them on foam because they will eat the foam. So we have found ourselves in quite the predicament and this is not an ICF problem. This has nothing to do with ICFs. Anyway, so here's where we found ourselves. We've spent a little time double checking the membrane, kind of looking over our work that we did last night in the dark, and we feel pretty good about it. We feel like it adhered well to the wall. It adhered pretty good to the footing, and it adhered okay to the face of the footing. We feel like when we overlap the additional membrane, that lower part of the membrane should be okay. So, we also, have found in our research that you must protect the membrane. Another thing was never mentioned to us and nobody seems to carry the product. Both companies that we're using membranes from, both Polyguard and Henry, both require some sort of drainage composite to protect the membrane from backfill. Because if you throw a bunch of rock in there and it punctures the membrane, well, there goes your membrane. So because we already have to protect the membrane anyway, we've come to the conclusion that our membrane is probably fine. We don't feel like it's okay, we're not sure. It's good, it's as good as anybody else. It's as good as the code requires. The only other option would be to wrap our entire house in a balloon and live in a bubble. This is a rant, but this is also reality. So we thought we'd start this video, unfortunately, with a bit of a rant because right now I'm actually almost nine hours into today. And I've, yeah, this this is the hardest part of building a house is that like yet yeah, another day has gone by and we feel like we haven't done anything. We've yeah. made no physical progress yeah. and the littlest things become roadblocks. And I've asked a lot of people who have different backgrounds what they would do. And at the hardware store, I got a lot of, well, what I would do is this or what I would do is that or oh, I'd never do that. I'd do this. I'd do that. And at the end of the day, it's our house. We have to build a home that we are happy with and none of those answers satisfied me. Even the companies who offer this product weren't able to provide me with what I would call a suitable solution. We talked about asphalting the footing with some sort of a roof patch up underneath the membrane, but at this point, removing the membrane would very likely do more damage to the membrane than leaving it. After all, it's not the asphalt that creates the seal, it's the membrane that creates the seal. The asphalt's nothing more than an adhesive. While talking to our contractor friend, he said, oh, by the way, don't use the rolly up corrugated drain pipe. It crushes under the weight of backfill, to which I went, hmm? oh crap, <laughs> that's the stuff that we have. That we so, didn't install yet. That we haven't somehow we haven't by the tags off maybe of. by luck. Maybe that was maybe that's why we haven't figured this out because he was supposed to tell us exactly. not to install that. What we've decided to do is spend the afternoon returning the drainage pipe and acquiring hard pipe or rigid pipe to apply to our drainage system. We're going to cut some patches in the membrane to fix some of the areas like the corners and things where we've got kind of a origami type situation going on and then we should be in a position to move forward with installing our drainage. I don't think the drainage is gonna get started today. It's too late, it's too hot. But if we can get this waterproofing under control, it'll be a good place to be. This heat is making Alyssa feel mood challenged to be politically correct. <laughs> You know what's funny is it smelled like laundry soap out here for the oh, longest time and you know what it toilet. is? It's the toilet. No, it's this. Really? Like Hold on. Ah, oh, totally. I think this drainage pipe is meant for like landscaping, like in your yard. I don't know, it's pretty rigid because it's corrugated, but something tells me that if you put 11 feet of backfill on it, it's not gonna hold. Good not to risk it. Well, 
four inch PVC, if you drive, I think you can drive a truck on that because it's rated at like 2,500 PSI. There's no way you're gonna drive a truck over this stuff. Time to go back where you came from, a little drain pipe. We did a little bit of research at the hardware store about perforated drain pipe. We're gonna do some note taking and designing on that drainage system. So Alyssa is going to help me. She's gonna be working on getting these membranes fixed in this corner. This membrane was so gapped right here that this is what it, a relief cut looks like. So she's gonna be creating a new, mem new membrane that comes down here and then a membrane that comes across each side, basically healing this entire corner. And then we've got a couple other corners that need to be done also. At that point, we'll kind of reassess. We may be ready to put in our filter fabric and some drain rock in preparation for our drain pipe tomorrow. In this corner, I'm gonna do what you recommended, which okay. is apply these lower patches first. Yep. So this patch is going to hug and lap over here rolls down it's a very small relief cut there seals over the edge of the footing there and looks like i need to make a small relief cut here tuck this over the edge of the footing and then this will seal over hmm. that That's beautiful. i'm tempted to do one coming the other way i don't think it's necessary like, but i feel it. like yeah i feel like if i put this corner piece on now mm -hmm. it'll have six inches of overlap on each side. So let's try that. Let's check this corner to see where we're at. This one definitely needs some TLC. I feel like this is going really well. Like the patching thing, at first it sounds like Tacky. plan B, like we're making it work. But I think, well, first of all, Polyguard makes patches. Um, but I think it's just strips of this that you're supposed to use, you know, a certain amount or whatever. So I feel like these corners are really going well. I don't, I don't feel like this is a afterthought type strategy. It's nice having an upper line to target. I can see now that if we, I mean, we already did this on the continuing pieces, but if you just basically bring the stuff to the corner and then, you know, patch your corners, it creates such a better finish than if you try to wrap an entire sheet around the corner. We think we're about ready to go ahead and lay our filter fabric and our drain tile. Except since we don't have uh, the pipe we're gonna use, we have to go, probably gonna price drop a little bit, see where we can get that tomorrow. And we really don't see any benefit to laying the filter fabric tonight. I don't know, it's a lot of work when we can't do the rest of the stuff and what if it blows away? So I'm just gonna go ahead and clear out some of this rock just to make sure that we're good to go tomorrow. What are you working on? Zip tying the second row to the first row. Ah, oh, nice. Vertically. Yep. We need to put an angled piece of rebar in the top of this row. And then we'll put another piece of rebar in this row. Yep. And then those that row that we added last night, yep. there needs rebar. Um, if you want to patiently cut that um, corner block over there, the one that's extended too far out, see how far it needs to extend. Yep. It should be as far as that one. Yeah, and then if you wanna work on cutting this piece, I'll get the rebar for this and then you can put the, the yep. buttress piece on. Uh, I forgot to tell you what I was planning on doing here. So because this peg is so far out, yep. I think we should bring this buttress out yep. maybe six inches, okay. um, something like this. So we'll save pieces that have the tongue and groove and uh, a butt joint there and we'll strap around the end of that whole buttress 
it'll be a little longer than it's engineered at. It's engineered yep. at four feet, but yep, it'll give us that that final dowel, yep. which will help just that much more. I don't think there's anything that would keep us from stacking this row out to the corner too. So I guess there's plenty to keep us busy this evening. call them the T's. T bracket. T brackets have little nubbins that stick up and while you can force the IC up down you can also just take a screw and whittle out where the brackets go and I found that works really well. Look at Alyssa being a tool maker. Look at me being ingenuitive. And you pull up gently on that end there. You know what I foresee happening right here? When the kids are bad, this is the corner they're gonna go. Corner. It could be. It's gonna be a cold corner too. It's all concrete. This will probably be where the like height charts are. Yeah. On this wall. <laughs> yeah. dinner time yet <laughs> I feel like we have our own castle like when I drew castles as like you know an eight-year-old or whatever I always drew these things on them were those ICF castles that was probably <laughs> like what's that called like a premonition Prem or something premonition yeah <laughs> should be a line there. Good. So before you put that in there, this tongue has to get you're going to have to trim this tongue. one tongue. Okay. How's she looking? It's amazing once you get a little system down in your head how smooth this goes. Like at first, cutting the seams is really intimidating. Mm -hmm. But after you do a couple, you're like, oh, I've got this. Yeah. I think it looks good. Hold on. What's up? <laughs> you want to come into my foam house? It's super strong. <laughs> it's made of strong stuff. Well, somehow, after a long day of seemingly low productivity, Alyssa and I have managed to put out Three solid hours. Really? That much? Yeah. It's about 8.30. You wrapping up over here? You yeah. Got a few more to go? I think so. This one I don't think we need to, we don't want to tie that down yet. Oh, but no. Everything else is tied, so. All right. And tomorrow we're good to make progress. Good job. So row two in the back and row three on the step downs. Yep. It's pretty, pretty much good. complete. Starting to take shape. What's really sad is that now we're going to have to start building the bracing. And we're going to slow right back down. That's probably true. 
So apparently it takes forever to get through the first two rows. You have one row where you're like, you're look like, at us go. Exactly. We're rocking. And it's yeah. like, never mind, slow back down. Yep. I'm excited though. Yeah. I'm excited as long as we're making forward progress. So now it's getting too dark to work. So what do we do? Get on our phones. <laughs> Time for research, because research can be done in the wee hours, the twilight hours. Yep. So we've got to cost out some of the drain pipe for tomorrow and get a plan in place for that because that will be the bottleneck tomorrow. It's what's keeping us from stacking more block. Yeah. We can't Hopefully go. we can pick that up around 8 a.m. or something. Yeah, or as soon as we can call and get a cost. Yep. Because we have to go back through this, um, we've had a few costs that were not budgeted and it's starting to add up. So I'm becoming more price sensitive <laughs> so we'll do some internet research tonight to try to narrow down the big box stores and then we'll call locals tomorrow try to get some costs and hopefully we can get drain pipe in the morning yeah that'd be really awesome and we're thinking about trying to put in a good day's work tomorrow yep, we've got yeah we've got some good friends who are camping this weekend those dirty dogs why do they got it why do people i gotta go camping when we're building a house and they're going somewhere beautiful yeah they're going somewhere really nice and relaxing and cool not hot not dusty and there's water and there's water and friendly people and food mm -hmm. <sighs> all right back to research <laughs> morning we're going to be working on drainage we've got new pvc sewer pipe perforated uh, with bell ends we're going to be installing our filter fabric first uh, along the footing i have two layers of that why i don't know because i feel like it's going to make it better so it's pretty cheap stuff and if your drain pipe clogs I have to tell on us, we were frantically looking for drain rock uh, or pea gravel last Friday because we thought that this was going to hold up the project over the weekend. And it turns out here it is uh, Thursday, so it's been almost one week and we haven't used this rock at all. This type of thing I feel like is where a lot of the waste happens in a project where you're in a hurry, so you make the selection that you have available. And then here we are a week later and this gravel hasn't even moved. So we probably could have taken our time and paid about a third the price for this rock that we paid. I don't think that there's a lesson to be learned there per se, other than things rarely go as planned or as scheduled. If you're working on drainage, you'll find a non-woven fabric that is rated for this application. You can use some gardening fabric too, but you need to really be careful. This product is so important to the success of the system that skimping when it comes to this fabric just seems almost ridiculous to me. Ultimately, it's designed to keep the fines uh, from clogging up your gravel and your pipe. A lot of these membrane companies specify to put some sort of foam or bubble wrap over the membrane so that you don't puncture it when backfilling so a drainage composite which is another product that you buy right. from them to cover yep. their product with more of their product exactly and it has filter fabric on it it's basically bubble wrap with filter fabric and it's supposed to help the water move down so it sounds to me like another membrane in the end all you're trying to do is protect the membrane during backfill um and, and we're going to use foam well, we have lots of extra foam that came with the ICS. This is all packaging, right? So they put it in with yep. the, to protect them. It's Good enough. end up in the landfill. Yep. We'll so use it to make our house more better, mo better. Do you want these? This wall? Okay.
we're trying to create some sort of cradle with this filter fabric. So what I'm doing, this is pretty pathetic, but we're just kind of attaching it up here loosely with rock. Um, once we lay the pipe in there and then all the rock, it's okay to kind of fold this over. Um, I don't know. Terry wisdom. Yeah. I think we should have an Alyssa ingenuity. We should have an it's Alyssa. so rare. Well, I would say it's rare. It just doesn't find its way on the camera. I had Jesse build me a rock plotter. Yeah. So we're using rocks to hold the fabric to the top of the foam. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, when you need rocks, you can't find any. Yeah, we got rid of them so, all. <laughs> so I can't really move to go to the rock pile on this side of the wall. Yeah. So I had Jesse bring the rocks to me. So as I move down, it's patented. Here's Alyssa trying to be ambidextrous. Sooner or later, those roots were going to get trimmed. <laughs> Sorry, roots. Oh my gosh, my hair and my shirt thank me. They look like really healthy roots, but they're in the way. Hmm, cross sawing. This is a new technique. Jesse said I could come out of the trench now. decided that we're gonna glue these together out here and we're gonna lay them next to the footing in one swoop. Sure sounds ideal, doesn't it? That's it. <laughs> so yeah, we uh, the contractor that we ran into locally yesterday uh, highly recommended we do not use the slotted corrugated perforated pipe uh, because in backfill applications like this, heavy, uh, highly likely that the pipe will crush under pressure. So um, we decided to return that yesterday and I spent the morning this morning calling around and getting the best price on this perforated PVC sewer pipe. This is the same pipe that you would use for a drain field on a septic. Uh, it has two uh, holes drilled in it. And so when we glue this pipe, these holes need to be oriented exactly the same. So we went ahead and sourced this stuff. Um, I actually feel a lot better about it anyway. Yep. Ooh. Whoa, Nelly. It's got personality. The thing I will say about four inch sewer that putting together sucks. Anna sent us a photo of her hands purple and she's like, guess what I've been doing? And I was like, picking huckleberries or playing with primer. <laughs> <laughs> You've either been plumbing or stuffing your exactly. face like a <laughs> spring bear. This brush apparently wants to just be inadequate. Hey. Good. Good. That's only 30 feet. It needs six more, right? Uh, more than that. Okay. Gotta pull yours to the corner. Okay, hold on. Okay, you good? Okay. Good. So, change of plans. We were going to have this filter fabric up here underneath, and we were gonna put a bunch of rock on top of it and then put another one. But seeing as we're working in this like really small trench, we decided to just wrap this filter fabric around the pipe by itself. We're still gonna go ahead and put a bunch of rock on there. And then we're gonna put another piece of filter fabric. Um, I think that small change is gonna make our lives a heck of a lot easier. Wow, 
Check out our drainage slug. Almost done with the pipe. Yeah, let's just say it's a good thing we had about a half a dozen couplers laying around. Because when you're working with rigid pipe, an inch matters. And orientation matters on the drain pipe, which we managed to turn the wrong way. I think that's part of just working in the heat for us is just like clarity of mind just gets away from you. you Some would you say you shouldn't work up. in the heat, but if we are 30% productivity, guess what? We're 30% ahead in the end, so. so. You work at night. <laughs> Don't work in the dark and don't work in the heat. <laughs> is what two sweaty home builders look like after moving by bucket. Six yards? Somewhere around six yards of soil. Actually six yards of pea gravel to the back side of our house. And yeah, that was just really crazy. One bucket at a time. The good news is we had the backhoe to put it in the wheelbarrow. Yeah. And the wheelbarrow to get it to the wall. So if we didn't have the backhoe, we'd have like double labor. I just feel heat like radiating off of you right now. I am, I am categorically scorching right now. But what's really funny, maybe you can attest to this, I don't know, is that mind numbing physical labor after all the mental grind better, right? of the last few days somehow feels like progress. It does even though it's exhausting and yeah. we're probably gonna wake up with a kink in our backs in the morning. Oh my God, totally. So now what do we do? So I think we need to put filter fabric and sprinkle a little more gravel and that's just to hold the fabric down, right? Yeah, yeah. Just to, so in theory, yeah. like... The wind doesn't blow it away or... In theory, yeah. maybe two wheelbarrows, one wheelbarrow per side or something. Yeah, it shouldn't take much. I mean, like a wheelbarrow is like around 10 buckets, something like that, <laughs> somewhere in there. So more, yeah. maybe one wheelbarrow. Cool. Yeah, should do the trick. And then, and then we'll go to sleep happy. So, I mean, we could stop if we want or we could keep going. Yeah, we got a little bit on the east side that we need to finish with the backhoe. So, yep. but the good news is we can reach that with the backhoe. Exactly. I will take a moment and just say that I said in our backhoe video that we didn't really plan to use the extend a hoe much. And, and I'm done nothing but use the extend hoe. Pretty sure we use it like every day. Yep. <laughs> so, yep. I will eat my words on that yeah. one. We bought two rolls of this? Yeah. 150 feet each? Yeah. I planned on doing two layers. The first layer is kind of like a sock around the perp pipe. Just because, like, it's cheap. This is 15 whopping bucks. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, and then we'll put a layer over the drain rock. So, as all Ooh. this organic matter, as yep. they call it, decides to work its way through the soil, in theory, it'll hit this. Good. Oh, gotta go on this way. Uh, we need to sprinkle, right? So. Oh, you're right, okay. Whoops. Mm, there. You just want it lightly sprinkled, right? Over here is where it's important. Kind of up against this. Well, on this side. Yeah. Need to do the east wall. So the answer is a full wheelbarrow full. Yeah. For one side, huh? Yep. I think we did good. I think we did think good today. We should just sit here and enjoy our $600 gravel. Right? Just think about. I love when kids come by like they can't help but play in it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's like a big adult sandbox. Yeah. Yeah. So wow. we'll be back at it tomorrow, so no need to give too much of a summary. Well, but I wouldn't promise too much because oh, friends be camping, you right. know, and tomorrow will be Friday, you dog. You're right. So our goal was we might work in the morning and yeah. wrap this up. Yep. If we can get the water, the drainage done, that will like be completely. huge. Yeah. Yep. So and then back to, to ICFs. Yeah. And quickly, we're gonna need to work on bracing, so yep. that'll so be now the next to hurdle. Figure that out. Yeah, good job today. You too. And uh, we forgot to mention there was a small smoothie break in there oh, somewhere. Yes. Uh, neighbor friend. Julie she doesn't knows. watch her videos. But Julie, Steve does. <laughs> if she ever watched her videos, she would know that we said thank you yep. on the camera. Um, smoothie was freaking incredible. All right, good job today. Backhoe served us well. It's out of gas, which is a great time to stop. We are out of gas, which yep. is a great time to stop, and we're ahead, which is a great time exactly. to stop. Exactly, yeah. Stop while you're ahead. See, we've learned something. I think the pipe went good. Uh, we made some mistakes on our cuts. We learned a lot from backfilling with the wheelbarrow of like everything else. By the time we got done, I think we were finally getting pretty yep, good. Yep, we had at a pretty it. good flow. Shower's preheated, so oh, yeah. I'm gonna go shower. All right, see you tomorrow. <laughs>
that'll kind of free us up. We've got some friends who are camping this weekend, and Alyssa and I, I mean, it doesn't even, it's not even worth mentioning, but we're insanely overdue for a little bit of R&R. &R. And uh, we really like these people a lot, so we like to hang out with them. We didn't uh, finish the filter fabric out to the end of the footing here because we've got a small drain that actually penetrates underneath the footing and that's to help drain the inside. We won't be putting the inside drainage in until we're done pouring the walls. It'll go along the footings here, but our, our bracing for the ICFs will need to sit on the ground there. So if we were to put that in now, they would conflict with each other. In between each major phase of this project is quite a bit of research. Sometimes when we get started on a piece or a project, we end up getting bottlenecked or I call it minutia. You can't finish that stage because you're stuck trying to find details. And part of this does come down to not having all of the data available at our fingertips when we start. And so these are lessons that I'm learning as we go. So before we start a phase, I find myself sitting here in the shade, taking a little bit of time to look over the project and, f and really try to think through what the problems could be or make sure that I have all the tools, the materials, the data. You know, there's nothing we're missing. I find that this really helps these phases go more smoothly. When you kind of jump in and just start going, which we've done a little bit of that, um, like with the membrane, we were delusioned into thinking we could just jump in. Well we ended up backtracking by like three or four days before we decided to move forward. So I'm gonna sit down and look over the plans, look over my notes, and kind of think about where we are with the ICF portion and make sure there's nothing here that I'm overlooking or forgetting. Um, something that I've been wanting to research is the strapping on the common seams. So we've got a common seam, I think right there, which means we've actually cut both block and there's no tongue and groove. Uh, it might be down one more block. <clears throat> those seams need to be reinforced before the pour because there's no tongue and groove to hold them from blowing out. Uh, I need to make sure that if those need to be braced inside and out, that we have access to the back walls so that we can put that bracing in place. Wouldn't it be a tragedy if we got the walls completely erect and <laughs> couldn't brace them? And the whole time during the pour, you're just sitting there going, God, I hope that doesn't blow apart. One of the things that we've learned with this project is that it's not necessarily the steps that are involved, it's the order or sequence of steps. So what I'm processing right now is how to get the uh, zuckles, excuse me, the zonts, these braces attached to the ICFs. I think 
that instead of trying to stack the ICF and then install the Zont, it may be easier to install the Zont on the ground and then stack the ICF because the instructions say to thread or poke a hole in the side of the ICF and wrap either a zip tie or 16 gauge wire around the in wall bracing and around the cross ties inside the wall. And that's what you secure the vertical braces to the ICF with. This Zont and Zuckles bracing system is a little different than the vertical bracing systems that a lot of companies typically use. So we kind of have to invent or somewhat figure out a way for this to work for us. So I'm kind of just processing this and thinking of a way to make it easier because if we try to attach this cam lock onto the wall, once the ICF is on, you're going to need a ladder and to climb up onto the top of the block and reach in to make the wire contact. This is one of those order or sequence of events things that I think if we do it right, won't be too bad. And if we do it wrong, it'll end up being a tremendous amount of work. So after thinking about it for a minute, I realized that the wall basically has to be assembled before you can even start installing these braces. According to the instructions, we need to wrap, poke a wire through the wall, wrap it around this in-wall bracing and these cross ties, and I'm going to assume the rebar too, because that's what's, you know, a part of the structure of the wall. Poke it back through the wall and have these kind of pigtails sticking out. We'll put our brace across here and then wire tie that to the wall, which means we can both push and pull on the wall. You're not supposed to pull. That's not what you want to do. At, at the worst, you want to push, but that's according to the instructions. The reality is if your wall's bowed out, you're going to have to find a way to bring it back to true. So I'm realizing that while I'd love to install these cam locks on the ground and then attach the block, the wire tie portion um, going through here is going to have to be done after the rebar is in and after the in-wall bracing is in. And of course that all can't be done until the wall is built. Alyssa tells me that the video for you folks is about uploaded, which means we are free to go. I did get one more row of ICF on there, but I ran into <clears throat> quite a few problems. There's areas of the footing where the footing, like on the step down, is off by maybe eighth of an inch. And the net result is you get the blocks trying to compete for who gets to go up. I've learned that with the ICFs, each course has to be perfect before you move on to the next course, or you can't go back and fix it. You, you'd have to literally disassemble the entire row, work on the row that's broken till it's fixed, and then move on. I took quite a bit of time to try to figure out why these blocks are off an eighth, which is maddening because the blocks were off by an eighth per block, and now it's struggling because of an eighth of an inch on our footings. And I suppose this is just par for the course. So I'm going to be taking it a little slower from now on with these upper rows of block because those small inconsistencies are going to begin to magnify 
the higher we go is those blocks are going to want to separate like this. So it's gonna take some patience to make sure they all fit. On a positive note, it did occur to me that the pieces of block that we're trimming for either the corners or the common row, those pieces can be reused as other pieces common rows. I know that seems brutally obvious now that I say it, but it takes a little creativity to make them work. But the good news is we don't have any wasted block now. No scraps left over. So hopefully we can continue that trend. And uh, I actually need to do an inventory at this stage of the project. We're at a very specific stopping point. So I need to take inventory and make sure that we do have sufficient materials to finish the job. Lightform did make sure we had a few extra blocks, but, and we haven't made any miscuts. cuts. We've made a couple of cuts that we weren't happy about, but we decided to just move those to the top of the wall. So they're still okay, but maybe they're not ideal for the bottom two rows. So we're gonna save that block and we'll just use it toward the top of the wall. Anyway, today was a highly successful day. It's time to go stick our toes in the creek. We'll see you tomorrow. Can you wash this? Mm, sure. Thanks. What would you say if I told you that two redonkulously large mushrooms popped up in our home site last night? Really? Not even kidding. <laughs> Look at that. Really? Yeah. That's so funny. That happened. What the heck? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> they like grew overnight. Yeah, they came out of nowhere. Those weren't there yesterday. Wow. We need to put like a night so time weird. lapse out here and yeah, keep right? an eye on what's going on. Yeah. Are they edible? <clears throat> Maybe so. they're morels. I don't think so. They don't look like morels. <laughs> Should we leave them? I would. What do you think? Mm, just leave them. So we got a little R&R &R in last night, spent a little time with some good friends by the creek, had a few beverages and talked about building stuff. Turns out we're not the only one building stuff and having a lot of setbacks. <laughs> so it made us feel better about ourselves apparently. So this morning, we're gonna try today to put in about a half day because the forecast for today says 95 degrees and that's for the local area, which our property it's about 10 degrees hotter, so we're looking at 105. Melissa and I talked for a couple hours last night trying to figure out how we can make this home build more tolerable. It's been an extremely hot summer following an extremely cold and long winter. Our timing on this home build is pretty poor. So we're trying to kind of mix things up to try to find a way because we've been putting in too many hours and the heat is has been the biggest issue. It just really clouds your thinking. It makes everything more difficult. So we're trying to find, while not not working, trying to find a way to make productivity go up and happiness and enjoyment go up. So let's try four hours today. Let's see where we're at around noon and see what the progress looks like. Yesterday, we finished this row of block. What we need to do, a couple of things. One, I want to test fit the next row of block. If you can see really closely, this row of block starts gapping at the top. That's because these, these blocks are actually going apart at the top. And it's kind of frustrating. I haven't figured out what we're doing that causes that, but we have to get it resolved because we have five more rows of block to go above these three. Any of those issues are just gonna magnify. Once I feel confident that we've got this kind of figured out, we learned this from the first row, don't glue and screw anything until you check to make sure the next row is gonna fit. I think the issue actually starts here at the buttress and I'm not even 100% sure why. I feel like this buttress is off this way by one eighth of an inch, which is really easy to do because you're severing the ties right there. So I need to spend some time just test fitting blocks and trying to find a way to make sure that everything is good to go on this row. Then this row, pretty simple row, zip tie it to the row below. There's no rebar or anything in there. 
but we do need to begin setting up our bracing system and that's probably gonna take the majority of our time today. I'm a little concerned that this bracing system isn't going to work for us. We're going to test it today and I'll kind of walk through some of the struggles and here's hoping it works good. Who knows anything about mushrooms? Are these gonna shrivel up as soon as the sun hits them? They've only got about, got about six inches of shade left to go. So I've done just a little bit of test fitting in the trouble areas. And the good news is that these blocks, they have a tiny bit of movement in the joint. If these keys don't line up perfectly, usually you can kind of just give a gentle nudge one way or the other, and you can get it close enough to get the block to seat. I always wonder, like, I would think that as you get higher and higher, these small gaps are gonna become more and more important because once you get to the top, your wall could shape like this if you're not careful. I did yesterday take a level around and check in these little valleys for level crossways and it looked really good. Checked across the corners, looked really good. And then I did a plumb check, you know, along this face and that face and everything's plumb. So we're doing pretty good. That problem spot over there is probably the one that I was worried about the most. There's a little gap right there. That gap follows the footing. So there's a tiny little lip or something on the footing right there that's making that block want to climb. And we've had to kind of average it out through all these subsequent blocks, which is why we end up with gaps um, like right there. I mean, that's actually not a gap, that's a shadow, but we end up with those gaps and we have to find a way to get these blocks to fit. Since I've test fitted those treble areas, I know I'm not out of the woods yet, but I think we're okay to start zip tying. It's only been a couple of days, so this is still fresh in my mind. And that is don't glue, screw, or zip tie anything until it's good to go. So I'm gonna probably have problems with this row and it's gonna become more and more difficult to stack these blocks. We knew this time was coming, but these blocks cannot be stacked from the ground now. We're having to change up our strategy. This is going to be quite difficult in my mind it would be ideal to put the drainage in here and backfill this and give ourselves a level walking surface around these blocks. But I don't think we should backfill against the block out of fear that they could get bumped and then it would be quite a nightmare to try to adjust. So it's better to keep them exposed. So for the time being, I'm gonna just have to use kind of creative scaffolding to get access to these areas. Once we get up above a certain, I mean, maybe one more row, it's time to use the ladder. Like we're not, we're not even gonna be able to reach it with scaffolding. So things are gonna slow down at this point. And on top of that, with the bracing system, reaching to these upper heights is gonna become somewhat precarious. This wall is 10 feet, eight inches from the top of that footing. This one is 12 feet because it has an additional row of block. So we're gonna have to get some tall ladders, which means you're gonna have to find a way to get this ground to be more stable. I kind of had this theory that if I kind of went, did multiple steps as I went, it would keep me from having to move the ladder a whole bunch. It turns out the screws that we have are way too long to install the cam lock part of the Zont system. So that means a supply run. I think to just keep energy high and productivity high today, I'm gonna to not get distracted by supply runs. So I think today I'll focus on just getting the zip tying done between the two rows. And I may try to explore a little bit uh, putting the wire that they recommend through the block and tying it around. You're supposed to secure that to the bracing, only their instructions are for vertical bracing and we're using a horizontal bracing system. So. 
maybe if I can work the bugs out on this stuff today, maybe tomorrow will be more productive. remembered that I had a bunch of like one inch T25 Torx screws and I dug them out and sure enough there's probably enough to get a row of bracing on. Working right along. So this is called a whaler, and up until now we've just talked about it and used hand signals. And the job of this board is to apply an even force across this wall. So if I push here, in theory it's pushing also down there. The goal, of course, is to provide a straightening effect on the wall. So these wires we put through here secure to the whaler and that makes it so that in theory, which you're not supposed to do, but in theory you could push push or pull this wall to bring it plumb prior and during the pour. And then back here we have the first strong back and this system uses a cam lock to tighten the strong back to the whaler and this cam lock as you turn it tightens this board. My fears were confirmed. In the documentation, they want seven inches of footing available. Three and a half is for the whaler, and three and a half for the strong back. And they want us to attach a plate here to the footing, straight to the footing, so that you can attach the strong back to the plate. Well, maybe they didn't consider every option, because in most places we have about four inches, give or take, of footing available. So as you can see, we only have one inch of this board sitting on the footing. So I have a couple of choices. I think I can notch this board out so that it sits down on the ground, but even that's not very ideal because the ledge that it's sitting on here is the ledge from the forms where it the concrete went underneath the forms. I was thinking that if I put like a Simpson bracket or something around each one of these and attach the Simpson to the concrete, and to the strong back, that would be a pretty adequate solution. So far, we've learned a lot about how the drawings that people use are often cartoons because they're not real world scenarios. They're like, okay, this is how the engineer built this system, go. And pretty much as soon as you start applying a system to your job site, 
everything on the drawing goes out the window and you start to have to really work your brain to find a way. So next, to make this system complete, we're going to be attaching a second strong back diagonally down to the ground here. And that's where the zuckle or turnbuckle comes in. And that turnbuckle will allow us to push and pull this wall to make very fine adjustments. It also triangulates that brace. And later on, we're going to have to build scaffolding on these strong backs. And that scaffolding is what we will walk on during the pour for the walls. If you're thinking, have you got that all figured out? And the answer is no. I haven't figured all this stuff out yet. To add insult to injury, the lumber that I purchased for our whalers is 14 feet. I don't know where in the earth I got 14 feet from. I think they should have been 12 footers. I have no idea. So we're going to have to scab a piece from here to here and then of course affix it to this uh, cam lock. That's understandable anytime you build whalers like this, even on regular concrete forms, you do a lot of scabbing because your boards are just never the right length and you just use what you have and make it work. The sun is getting very close over here. My shade is disappearing. That usually means it's about time to wrap it up on a short day. But before we wrap it up, I forgot to check on our mushroom friends. Oof, they are not doing well. Hey little guys. I feel ya. Yeah, you're shriveling up, huh? Oof, already crunchy. Before I keep going though, I'd like to get a beverage. And I kinda wanted to check on this cooler. So this milk has been in here for four days. <clears throat> this ice has been in here for a little over 24 hours. And there's another bag of ice in the bottom here. That ice has been in here for four days in this cooler. I'm really happy we made this investment because we keep the cooler full of drinks and things, and it's always in the back of the pickup, which makes it really convenient. I don't have to go in and harass Alyssa, and I don't have to go without. I just realized that we probably better give you guys this view as much as we can in the next couple of days because pretty soon you can't even see the top of that board and I'm behind the house. The walls are gonna be about this high and we won't be able to see in there with the camera anymore. So hopefully you enjoy this angle. Well, a half a day turned into almost an entire day, but everything's going okay. We're having the same issues with the same areas over and over and over. But I think I might have come up with a method to use wire to tighten the joints on some of the blocks. I don't know, we'll have to try more tomorrow. The heat is really starting to build. It's getting very hot, which makes thinking very difficult and problem solving. So pretty good stopping point. This row needs some work tomorrow morning to finish it up. We are one half of the way up the walls, so we've got four rows to go. Alyssa came out and helped me this afternoon, which I really appreciate. Helped me get the first row of whalers on. 
couple more rows, I think three rows actually, and then we put another set of whalers on. So tomorrow's gonna be busy. Hopefully we get the 20 degree cooling that they promised us or they forecast us, whatever. For now, I think we're off to the river to enjoy some coolness and some fellowship with good friends. See you guys tomorrow. Hey, what the heck? Alyssa! <laughs> you guys aren't gonna believe this. Two things. One, it's like 75 degrees today and we're ecstatic. We are so ecstatic. We've never been more ecstatic. <laughs> I will bite my tongue because when I got up this morning it was almost 80 degrees. Yeah. And I was cursing the weather man and I said baloney. And I'll be darn, a cold front is like blowing in right now and the temperature has dropped. But I'm not mad, I'm just like yeah. irritated. It's raining over there. It's rain. That's why it's cooling off. We're, we're happy. Finally, a relief from the heat. Should we tell them what I heard from Lightform? Yep. It turns out we're idiots. <laughs> it turns out we were doing it right at the beginning and then we backtracked and screwed it all up. Let's, let's just show them. So I've tried really hard to read the documentation on all this stuff that we're doing. I've read Lightform's documentation multiple times and it talked about a common seam. And I said, yeah, common seam, got it. All right, we're good. And somehow, our building grew by one inch and we couldn't figure out what to do about it because these keyways are two inches apart. And so because the, the blocks have a tolerance, a little tolerance in each block, you add them all together and the building grew by one inch. So we've just been dealing with it. We actually averaged out the building by half an inch on all four sides. We accepted it. We talked to the engineer. They said it can be done. It's doable. All right. So we keep going. And as we go, we keep running into this problem where the blocks are slowly not fitting. So I finally got frustrated enough that I called Casey from Lightform and I said, Casey, I don't know what's going on. So he asked me one simple question. Do you have a common seam? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, right, from the floor to the ceiling. And I'm like, uh, n n no, n no, <laughs> no, not, no. It's, I, we just cut a block to fit. And he goes, oh, that'll never fit. I'm like, you're kidding. So then we had a great conversation for about 15 minutes wherein he reassured me that we should have done that from the beginning. Oh my God. But Jesse says we're fine. We are fine. You'll see, this is trippy. So let me, let's show him what a common seam doesn't look like. This block, we started in the corners. These are full blocks coming to here and full blocks coming to here. And we cut a block to fill the gap, right? Common seam. They said, <laughs> turns out this is not a common seam. This is a filler block or whatever you want to call it. The problem is these blocks come in two inch increments. The, the, the keyways are. So unless your house happens to be in two inch increments, this is never going to fit. And so Casey from Lifeform's like, you know, houses don't come in two inch increments, right? And I'm like, right. So he's like, how would they ever fit? And I'm like, oh, good question. So it turns out you bring block from each side to here until they don't fit anymore and cut it and cut it and cut it all the way to the top because wherever they meet it's not going to fit anymore and that's okay then if you leave a gap between these blocks you spray foam between the two and if you need to you apply strapping only for the pour once the pour is done take the strapping off dun, dun, dun. ICF wall that actually fits your house. I don't know if we're just crash test dummies or what, like we make this rookie mistakes. This is totally a rookie mistake. Anyway, so we're just happy that this is now off of our chest and we can get to work. So today we're gonna start going up. Um, we don't have screws for the brackets because we forgot to go get them yesterday because we were too excited to get the heck out of town and enjoy yep. some cool weather. So now we're gonna fill in uh, probably three more rows. Hey, this row gets rebar. It does, okay. The next one gets nothing. And then the next row gets bracing, gets and, bracing rebar. and rebar and 
in wall bracing. It's okay. a busy row. If we get two rows done, I think we're going to be pretty happy. The thing is, it's a bit of an irony because the wind is picking up suddenly for the first time in six weeks. And it just so happens that we're trying to build a 12 foot tall styrofoam exactly, wall. Yeah. So we've got to get either bracing up or yep. something or don't build too high because I was a little scared coming home last night that we'd come home to all these bricks <sighs> oh strewn gosh, all over the house. <laughs> Wind. All right, to work. I'm curious if Alyssa carries three in the wind, oh, yeah. whether she blows away. We've been finding that these forms like to sit up on their notches and we have to bash them down and I don't have enough strength to do it. And it hurts Jesse, so we're attempting this method and it's working a little better. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So you need to cut this side. Cut the you tongue need to off. cut the tongue off on both okay. sides, on this block and on this block. Okay. Yep. Otherwise, it's not gonna fit. Corners are always a booger because you always forget. So, get to undo this. Wow. God. I found that whittling out where these plastic tabs go with a screw works insanely well. So it's come to our attention that apparently our supplies are dwindling. I actually have a couple other things I need to get. I need to return a tape measure and other stuff. So I'm off to the supply store and Alyssa is going to keep going with what materials we have. It's raining behind Alyssa. Are you serious right now? Like the wind just came up and blew oh, yeah. all of our blocks off of yep. the, off the block. loose blocks that weren't attached to anything. What the heck? Like Alyssa said, you get one or the other. You get beating hot sun or wind that wants to blow everything over. The only thing guaranteed are problems. Yay, <laughs> job security. I'm off. I want to make sure I know what I have to do so I can make mad progress. Okay. Probably gonna run out of zip ties. I don't know that I'm gonna finish this course, but mm -hmm. I'll get as far as I can. Mm -hmm. All the rebar is done. Yep. So I think I can stack another course if I can mm -hmm. reach. Yeah, so I would say, because I'm gonna look for a ladder, yep. I would say do anything that's easy to do with that ladder. You started in that corner. I don't yeah, know if you can go like, like yeah. one block that way. And then yeah, work to this corner and then, you know, however far. So that'll probably, you'll probably run out of zip ties by then. Oh yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so wherever you zip tie, mm -hmm. you can stack block, okay. but everywhere else you can't yep. because it has to be zip tied. So that should keep you busy for a little and while. And then if I run out of things to do, video. Somebody has to edit all this fun camera footage. Yep. It's this one. And just like that, Jesse left about five minutes ago and I'm already out of zip ties. Dang it. Part of me likes when Jesse is able to leave and I'm here working alone. It's not that I enjoy working alone, but I like knowing that Jesse can count on me to get stuff done. There's been a lot of women that have asked me how they can help and support their husbands while they're building a house because in our case, Jesse's carrying a lot, a lot of the weight on his shoulders. He has a lot more experience than I do. So uh, a lot of the critical decision-making comes down to Jesse. So in addition to working, almost as much as he does, being out here every single day, slaving away. Something I've really taken it upon myself to do is understand what we're doing, ask questions so that if Jesse does leave, I can continue on my own, or just be extremely mindful of the tools, terminology. So 
most of the time I'm the one that goes to do the errands and it really helps that I have a base knowledge of what we're doing so that I know what products we need, how to ask for help, and I don't have to call Jesse every two seconds asking him what we need. So even if you're not the one doing most of the work, simply understanding the terminology is a huge help because believe it or not, sometimes there are bottlenecks like life or death bottlenecks and the solution is going to the hardware store in the middle of the day when it's cool, but you really want to be getting work done, but you can't until you go to the hardware store. One of the reasons I started on this wall is because not only is it the easiest to reach with the ladder, but there's actually a lot of finagling to do um, to get this buttress stacked and fit in here. So I figure that's a really good task to work on. And then when Jesse's back, we can stack these really quickly. And the hard work on this wall has already been done. Well, that's about as far as I can go until materials show up, so got about an hour to kill. Yay, Jesse's back. Watch out. You survived the drive. Oh cool, so this is like a scaffolding system. Yeah. So you had bad luck at Home Depot. Did you find the screws you needed? Yeah, and I, I guess we should have just ordered more zip ties when we got yep. the forms. Who knows if we're even doing it right? Maybe we're doing it too many. I made a few phone calls and I found twice as many for half the price. So it's worth of drive, but this looks good. Yeah. I think we're thinking of buying a ladder on Amazon and we're having it two days shipped. One that we can do adjustable legs and stuff to deal with all this uneven ground. I know we'll use it. I mean, oh, yeah. you just don't have a ladder we've like that. We've never bought a tool. We've never used a lot. Yeah. These ladders are really good, but on flat surfaces, which once we get through the slab, we'll have yep. a lot more flat surfaces. But yep. even after that, We'll still have siding and a bunch of other stuff that needs to be done down the road. None of that's going to be flat ground. So maybe time to spend some money. Yeah. So this evening we're going to try to get another block or two on or another row or two. We're going to try to get up to the next row of bracing. Yeah. Um, I have kind of this theory. I kind of already mentioned this earlier in the videos, but like when you're up on the ladder, do everything you need to do right there. Yep. So I think I can zip tie and then add another corner. And as I zip tie, add a row and zip tie that row. <laughs> do all the work you need to do so that basically by the time you're done, you're done. None of this like take the ladder around, take the ladder around, take the ladder around. Oof. Oof. Okay, here's this. Okay. Don't mean to hand it to you over there. That's good. Got it? Yep. Okay.
Can you reach this or is this bad? Got it. And then zip ties. Oh boy, yeah, they all blew off. <laughs> I'll just put a couple. I don't want them to get blown off. That would be bad. So let's put a brace up here. Um, let's see, this actually isn't supposed to go on this until the in wall bracing is in because it goes around the in-wall bracing. So getting just a squeak ahead of us cells here. Um, but I can put this bracket on. Can you hold that impact driver there? Just hold it there. And there's a T25. And you can, you screw that in straight. You just need to turn the cam lock to where it's not in the way of your drill or your driver. Good. So what I'd like to do is get the bracing like this on the top row and that will help us install some verticals and kind of start to stiffen the wall, which will make everything more windproof and stuff. And that's this row right here. Yeah, I just tap in here a little bit more, like right in front of you, kind of across those two blocks. Yep, nice work. So we're kind of at the end of the scaffold now, right? Okay. We need to go hot tubbing soon. We need to fly the drone over this thing oh, soon. Do. <laughs> that should happen tonight. It's about the only way we it's. We haven't flown the drone with ICFs yet at all. No, we're I pretty much. Like, yeah, tomorrow and tomorrow, like, oh crap, it's done. Ah, the lighting's not that good. Ah, yeah. uh, shadows are harsh. It's, it's, ah, it's windy. Now and it's not windy. We're not cranky. It's not hot. Oh, happy? Yeah. Okay, and then we need in wall bracing. In -wall bracing. Yep. Okay, those are real floppy, so I think it's gonna take two of us to do those too, so. The way this works is these pokey things right here, yep. those go in first, okay. so you put it in at this angle. Okay, it's like that. Yep. And then slowly push these down. Just push in one at a time. And you can't push one all the way down. You have to push like one over here, and then one over here, and then one over here. Yeah, and if you work them slowly, you'll get them in there. Now we need to do wires, which push through, wrap around the in-wall bracing, yep. and then come back out the wall. Time to put our whaler on. Um, the wing needs to go out. Okay. Like this? Yep, this sit right here. Oh, okay. Good? Yep. Am I just tightening it? So the board's not quite behind it. That's why it won't turn. So you need to push oh. the board away from you a little bit or pull that towards you one or the other. And it's just about getting it roughly tight. That's pretty tight. And we put one in each direction so that if it tries to push or pull, it can't. Very nice. Um, you can put screws in that one if you want. Okay. And I'll build another one real quick oh. here. Are we done? Yeah. Um, it's a pretty good day. Yeah, I'm just looking for anything that might want to blow away. 
This is probably actually pretty stable. I don't think we're gonna get wind tonight. <laughs> nothing, nothing worse than waking up in the night hearing the wind blowing, thinking, gosh dang it, what did I forget to strap down? Right. I'm gonna go see what this looks like from the hot tub deck. Wowzers. Jesse, I can barely see your head. Hi. <laughs> Tomorrow you won't be able to see me at all. No. Now also seems like a really good time to just go through our inventory. In theory, we did our job right, but I guess the uh, side of me that wants to be sure, wants to count everything up because we've got maybe four or five days of stacking block and finishing the forms. That's plenty of time to get other block here if we're gonna run out. We also want to go through some of our lumber. We did what was called a pull and hold, which means they pull it, band it, and then when you come to get it, they just drop it on your trailer. If you're familiar with lumber, a lot of times you actually wanna go through the lumber. They call it picking through the unit. A lot of people don't like you to do that. You know why? Because a lot of the, young, the lumber is crap. And so you end up picking all the good boards out and leaving all the crap lumber, which they can't sell. So what they do is they band it all together. You come get it and then you get to discover how crappy the boards are on your job site. So I need to go through some of that lumber because we're gonna return some of it. It's got so much bow and wain and crown and stuff that it's just not usable for what we need it for. So we get to waste time and take that lumber back. Yay! How about that? Our wall is still standing overnight. We're getting some of those wafty breezes that we're very accustomed to having, but we haven't had in a long time. Wouldn't you figure? It's about when we got the, uh, what, seventh row? <laughs> oh, hopefully I did my math right. It's a little trippy, because you kind of have to think of like what, what's a left and a right corner. You kind of have to arbitrarily decide this is a left, because the short side's going left and that these are right corners. I don't really know because the short side's going right. And I've deduced that uh, we do have a, at least three extra on one corner and two extra on another corner. Now I need to figure out how many straight blocks we need. According to my calculations, we have 99 blocks on hand and we only need 83 to finish this if we don't damage any. So some of this lumber that we bought for whalers and bracing if you look down the board, you want to make sure that there's no crown in the boards that we're using for whalers because they are helping to make sure that the surface they push against on the wall is straight. If they have crown in them, which is technically bow on the short side, then the wall will also have crown, or in this case, it'll actually bow because the board is laying flat like this. So I'm gonna go through these one by one since I'm gonna be going to the lumber store anyway and sort out any boards that are unusable and we'll get them returned and exchanged for lumber we can use. The good news is the lumber that we're gonna use for bracing doesn't really need to be super spectacularly straight. I may end up, just to save myself time, if I can find enough boards to do all of our whalers, then I'm not gonna bother with it. For those folks who may not know, when you buy lumber, I believe in most regions this is consistent. The lumber is stamped, the grade of the lumber. Here we go. So this stamp right here tells you that this is a Doug fir number two. What's really funny is when we bought this lumber, we paid for number one and better, which the stamp looks like this. So I immediately took a photo because this was all banded up when I picked it up at the lumber yard, sent a photo over to the lumber yard and said, hey, what's the deal? Is the stamp wrong or am I just paying too much for number two grade lumber? This board has an insane amount of twist, bow, and crown. <laughs> one board. There's no way that someone's going to accept this board as a number one or better. This is actually going to be a strong back, just like these. So it's not mega critical that they be dead straight. So this is about saving time, not money. I checked my math a couple times and I have no idea where I got the count for these lum this lumber. I sorted through the longer boards, which are 16s, and half of them are just terrible. Um, I didn't sort through the 14s yet because it's dawned on me that I'm, we're doing this, uh, this whalers and stuff wrong. We're doing all this wrong. 
So I'm instead of trying to wrap my head around how many pieces I need, I'm gonna take this whale these whalers apart that I've assembled and crack them and put 16 footers in there so that we have a much shorter area to scab over. I'm kind of confused. I don't know, maybe today is a really weird mental day. Can't seem to wrap my head around this. So I'm gonna tinker with this stuff for a little while and then hopefully that will help me to figure out what I actually have on hand. And then apparently we actually need to get more lumber. But in theory, we'll be returning some of this stuff and hopefully exchanging it for better lumber. So I just made a few tweaks. Took some time to sit and count and do some math and I think I know what I messed up. In my original plans, this is how I had intended our braces with a triangle and a vertical strong back. But there's actually what I'm gonna call a flying strong back, which actually comes out and is what supports your scaffold bracket. And then your diagonal brace here is what actually braces the wall. So there's actually three, three vertical pieces of lumber and I think in my original plans, I'd only accounted for two. That said, it looks like we can actually use some of this twisted and mangled lumber because those flying strong backs don't need to be perfect. They're just gonna hold a scaffold bracket and uh, mount to the plate. So we'll stick with them. Um, same thing with these uh, 14 footers. Pretty sure there's enough good lumber in there to get us all the vertical and the whalers and everything that we need to make it happen. I feel like this took, actually it did, it took almost four hours to inventory, clean up the garbage, and something else. All that stuff. And now I'm off to town, which will probably take the rest of the day. So if Alyssa and I are lucky, we'll get a couple of hours of work in today. Well, as predicted, this turned into an entire day affair. The good news is I've got lumber and hardware to move forward. I've got to eat some dinner with Alyssa, give us a little bit of energy, and then I'm hoping we can hammer out a couple of hours of work this evening. Is dinner almost ready? I had a hunch you were gonna come and videotape. I'm like, I just uh, know it, so I like did my hair. Yeah, it's the almost house. ready. Okay. <sighs> All right. Time to get back on an eating schedule. I know, we've, we've been eating like bachelors lately, which is stupid, but I'm not gonna, not gonna complain. Can only prioritize one thing at a time. All right, I'm gonna go work on some stuff. Holler at me when it's ready. Okay, I can come out and help you after dinner if you want. Yay! One of my big to-dos is I gotta check on the batteries because they're not getting topped off. We did have a really poor solar day yesterday, but I wanna double check their waters because we've been having triple digit heat for a long time and I have a hunch we're running a little low on water. Not too bad. Certainly could be much worse, but. Are you walking on the solar panels? Looks to me like the solar panels need to be cleaned. Turns out all the dust we're making is coating the solar panels. Huh. Yeah, this way you don't put solar panels on the ground. I'm bug a fish. So the first priority tonight after we have dinner is to get these fascia boards onto the footing. And I wondered how they were gonna do this with the strong back system. You can see this strong back, strong back is barely sitting on the footing. And I looked really carefully at the plans and it calls for a fascia board. So this fascia board screws to the concrete here and then we're going to screw a plate onto the concrete and onto this board. These strong backs are going to sit on that plate and toenail into it. And there's also going to be the flying strong back that I mentioned earlier that creates the triangle for our scaffold. It's probably one of my least favorite tasks in the world is drilling concrete. I actually have a pretty cool hack but I'm not gonna share it in this video. I used to do some transition metal uh, flooring repairs in a previous job, 
and I came up with a method of attaching stuff to concrete that was awesome. But we're not gonna use that this time. Instead, we purchased screws. Good old concrete screws. And fortunate for us, they come with a good set of bits. The reason I went this route is these are very small screws. So there's not much to drill. We'll get started on this after dinner. Dinner was amazing. And I'm gonna mark the depth that I have to go to on the concrete with this guy. That will help me make sure that I don't spend a whole bunch of time drilling too deep. My lumber is an inch and a half and I wanna drill at least one inch into the concrete. So I'm gonna mark my bit at two and a half inches. Sometimes tape, like bright blue masking tape is actually a better way to mark your bit, easier to see. Unfortunately, wait, holy smokes, we just got lucky. I was totally just gonna comment how Alyssa and I don't have a hammer drill and a hammer drill is what you really want for concrete, but would you look at that? This Makita drill has a hammer setting. Ha! This whole entire time I was dreading this task because I'm like, we don't have a hammer drill. All these tools in our storage unit, we don't have a hammer drill. Lo and behold, Makita, you haven't let me down. So, kind of crank the uh, tension up a little bit on this guy. And let's see how this goes. Gonna drill the board and the concrete at the same time because aligning the two holes uh, later would be pretty challenging. Oh, well, we didn't get very far, did we? All right, through the wood. Well, that was tolerable. Okay, definitely don't want to ream that out. So we should be good to attach our first screw. Probably would be easier if I were to overdrill the board slightly large so that it doesn't grip the screw. Let's try one and see what happens here. Looks like our screws are longer than I drilled, two and three quarters. We might as well just drill till the chuck hits. That'll help us avoid bottoming out the screw like I just did, which probably just ruined our hole. Good. Trick with concrete is do not drill the same hole more than once. Get it in there, lock it in, and leave it. Rotka, that looks really strengthy. This is why the thought of doing Titan HD anchors after the fact sounds ludicrous. But I will, I will humble myself and listen to the people who've done this before. Yep. But this just no is like I've never drilled concrete and thought, no, oh, that went pretty good. <laughs> One hole. I smell that like crazy. One screw. hopeless right now. You will love this footage when our house is built and we're sitting in our living room right here watching the snowfall.
So this is the part of this whole bracing system that I was hoping to get to sooner than later to see if it's even worth it or not. It doesn't really matter because we can't find any other bracing system. We haven't been able to find another bracing system But let's locally. pretend that we had a choice. <laughs> we tried, contacted a few people. But the selling point of this bracing system is that it uses a whaler on the wall to push the wall for plumb. The theory is that you have all this I don't know what I'm trying to say. They're saying that it's horizontal bracing, so it's better because every other system is vertical. So when you adjust a vertical brace, your wall dances, basically. To the Zont people, if you're watching this video, in what universe is drilling concrete an improvement? I don't even have words. Like, you, you solved one problem and you created like a thousand more. This is like YouTube logic. <laughs> I know how to make it better. Use a whaler and all you have to do is drill a thousand holes in concrete. Trust me, your wall will be straighter than you've ever seen. Board on the bottom, board on the bottom. Don't worry about the chem up top. Good. Don't worry about the chem on top. Okay, I can't just I drop it. it. So it's on. Okay, it's not fine. good. It's fine. It's fine. So I can sledgehammer it over? Nope, it's fine. Right there. Okay. From here, we need to cut the scaffold brackets. And I'm thinking, I wonder if those those flying strong backs are going to actually intersect our old scaffold. <laughs> like how hard is this going to be to put this together? Of course, we're working in the hardest area. Yep. I mean, this is by far with ladders <laughs> and everything, like getting a level ladder over here is nearly impossible. But we decided to try to do it, you know, with the ladders that we have. So we could spend a thousand bucks and have more level ladders. But okay, so yeah, I need to cut the, the scaffold brackets. Let's reset this scaffold. We'll get you up there we'll attach those where we think they're gonna go, mm -hmm. and then it'll be really obvious where to put the flying strong back. Because okay. it'll basically toenail at the bottom, and then it'll intersect the scaffold bracket at the top, and then we'll just attach all that together with screws. Ladders are so hard to move one person. Yeah. The one by your eyeballs. The big goes here. Go up one more. Oh yeah, position. Time for Alyssa to go up. Gonna be a little harder. Okay. I'm gonna put oh. the flying strong back up. Yep. And that one screw needs okay. to be fastened in there. I okay. probably should have put more screws. I just didn't know with the angle. Yep. That's okay. So. Good. Yeah, getting, unfortunately, a lot of today was prepped to like be able to work. You know, That's how, like this whole thing is though. Yeah, a day of prep and two to three days of work so and a day of prep. Just gonna build, build, build out of their mind. <laughs> well, yeah, somebody has to get the materials, do the shopping, the pricing, clean up. Like, yeah, today I cleaned up from like two and a half weeks of crap. Uh, let's get this brace on here okay. and then I want you to get down there. Yeah, I think we should work on this tomorrow. It's good enough for tonight. We've kind of validated this. We'll get some toenails on the bottom there and brace this off. And then when there's daylight, we'll kind of work on this. Battery's dying. Yeah, all of our batteries are dead. We'll catch you guys tomorrow. Will it even we'll focus? do more of this fun stuff. Is it even focusing? Eh, ish. It's past focus 30, we're done. Yep. Time to clean up. <laughs> Hasta mañana, amigos. Today is brace day, but before we do anything, I have to clean this camera lens. It is so nasty. Hold on a second. That's pretty good. 
all we can hope for is cleanish. So I think our goal today is to figure out this whole zont and zuckel thing. We want to complete one section of the wall 100% just to make sure we understand what we're getting ourselves into. And then I think our goal is to finish the wall and the bracing and the scaffolding as we go around the wall rather than doing everything in layers because we really don't like setting up our temporary scaffolding more than we have to. So unless the plan changes, that's what we're doing today. You feeling good? I'm good. I'm highly motivated to get a lot of work done today. Yep. And as is unfortunately so typical with our days, we spend four hours in the morning dealing with minutia. I would say we actually work on this project four hours a day actual work. Yeah, it kind of feels that way. And four to six hours of minutia. This is why we don't make much progress. It's like we work, 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 and it looks about the same as it did yesterday. Today, we invested in a bunch more drill bits. My theory has always been drill bits are cheap. Drilling in concrete sucks. Yep. So we've got maybe like eight bits now. So if we have to sacrifice a bit every three or four holes, I don't care. Yesterday, I picked up a bunch of high quality lumber that will mean we don't have to pick through all this crap. So that'll save us time. I gotta get that unloaded. And then yeah, hopefully. Let's rock and roll. You're in a good mood. You have got good energy. We ate breakfast, real food. <laughs> I think that happened because we ate real food last night for dinner, which tends to like, <laughs> anyway, you know what I'm talking about. In my morning, one cup of coffee brain. I think I put the drill bits. <gasps> Not there. Where did I put them? Aha, I did put them somewhere non intuitive. Shabam. You probably can't even reach that corner, huh? Because that ladder is so big. Nice. Happy? Yeah, looks good. Okay. And we'll run the tape down the other side. So hook it on the far back of the wall. All right, you happy? Yep. Hey. 36.9. That's right where right where we're supposed to be. So we need to move this brace down. That little... block height will be about right here. And we want that it actually more actually might like... be good. Yeah. Because if it's too high, then the pump guy is gonna have a hard time getting the hose down in there. He's gonna have a hard time reaching down in. I think what they don't want, they don't want to like ankle height so you topple over into it. You don't want it, it here where you're falling in and you also don't want it here where you can't reach. So um, there, we only have two more blocks. Two blocks minus the thickness of that brace. Two blocks is 32 inches, which is approximately my waist right here. Yep. So minus the height of that board. So the block will be about right here, which would be perfect for floating. So remember, if you can just get one screw, yep. and then I'll hand you the level. So now we need the flying strong back? Yep. Looks like it needs to go in at the bottom a little. Okay. kind of funny. I thought this was like the Zont and Zuckle system. Turns out there's Zonts and there's Zuckles. So I'm yep. probably not the only one that thinks that this is a Zuckle. Yep, this is a Zuckle. So <clears throat> this will go on the end of this two by four. It'll actually cap the end of the two by four. Uh, and then that will... This will attach to this the, the brace? Uh, flying strong back. Okay. Yep. And then you'll use a wrench right here to turn this turnbuckle to adjust the wall. Um, okay. Before these get attached, they need to be centered on the turnbuckle, so you have room to go up Either and way, down. Either way, that's a really, really great idea. Uh, hold on, let's uh, let's put this brace on first. 
and then we'll take that one off. Okay. These boards could have easily been 12 footers as it turns out. It needs to go like that. Okay, good. Okay, coming up. Almost like you stripped a tooth or something inside of it. Well, your days may be numbered, Mr. Makita. Yeah, so if you work on just the block yep. and the zip ties, that's plenty. I'll, you know, I'll, if you want to just bring yourself block, you know, that way I can leave. Um, I should be able to finish two rows here, mm -hmm. which won't take me that long. Yep. In theory, you shouldn't be going that long either, though. No. Nope. Good luck. The walk of shame. <laughs> I know, we're very to accustomed take, to the walk of shame. Take drill bits back because I bought the wrong size. Oh well. Okay, see you soon. Bye. So Alyssa confirmed what I already feared. There's a very small high spot on this footing down here. And the net effect, the higher we go, the more those gaps increase. Amazing how a very, very small gap down there, which you can identify right here because this block never wanted to sit down, which told me that this part of the block is aiming this way and then this part of the block is level coming in. So if we were to check across this block, it's probably stinking level. It's pretty dang level. Maybe a sixteenth. There might be an eighth there, maybe. But this side over here, it's probably quite out of level. So this side's too high. So this side needs to drop like this. No, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to Casey and see what he yeah. what he recommends because so far we're learning. Call Casey instead of making assumptions. There's a high spot here that started clear down there, and these blocks just want to separate on their way up. And you would think that there's no way that the building's not growing as we go higher and higher and higher. Although it is conceivable that this is simply tilting like exactly. this, and it's not, but doesn't make sense to me. Then what you simply do is you deal with it at the top. Okay. We can't change anything now. I know you've got your laser transit. You can chalk a line on the inside of the formwork. Yep. If there's a hump, then all we gotta do, trowel the concrete off. I like to pour the concrete up to that line and then deal with cutting the foam off with like a sawzall or something later after the concrete's cured. You could rip that top row down across that chalk line and level everything out. It's really up to you and, and what you feel like you want to do at that point. Cool. Okay, great. Um, you betcha. I think that's everything. Thanks. All right. See you, Jesse. Yeah, see ya. Pros know how to compensate. Like that's pros. it. It's all about how to fudge it. I mean, at the end yep. of the day, you want to be as close as you can be. You don't want to become like a professional fudger. Yep. Unless you do fudge for a living, in exactly. which case fudging is a good thing. That's fudge. So we'll fix it later. We're going to keep going. I kind of like the sh man-made shade we have here. We're making shade. 
We found another challenge. We have these studs that run up the sides of the ICFs and so far when we've been stacking the blocks all on top of one another the studs have been lining up perfectly. However, due to the partial blocks that we're having to cut, somehow our studs are off. And this is a problem because the zonts here need to be on top of one another. So this is screwed into a stud here, but up above on the next few courses we would have to be placing the zont where there is no stud. So guess what? There's nothing for the screw to grab onto. So instead we're going to place this plywood on the back of the ICF and we're going to screw into it from the studs and then we have a place to attach our zonts. You know what? You guys don't get to see this on camera because I don't think you could see anyways and my camera's annoying me. We actually determined that this north wall needs to come in a little bit and that will account for some of our growing wall here. This whaler here is all the way to the edge so we actually need to unscrew that and pull it down about maybe, I don't know, an inch so we have enough time to move the wall. And I think there's one more in this race right here. This time we're going to try building our bracing on the ground and then lifting it up as a unit, right? Yeah, just the scaffold bracket. Okay. The strong back, or yeah, the that seems really hard to do. strong back has to go around the scaffold so okay. it won't, yeah. Yep. How's it crumbing up there? That's good. Work, work, working away? Yep. Good job. How are you is the question. Yeah, my, uh, what's your dad call it? My fun, fun meter. My fun meter? It's pegged. <laughs> Paul, if you're watching, you know what I'm talking about. I guess this is part of just building a house. Apparently building a house is just like taking ownership of a bazillion problems and then letting go very slowly of Decision. accept and just like slowly coming to grips with the fact that your house is not going to be square level and true or something i don't know i feel like i'm i'm fighting to not let go of our dream but i don't think we're letting go of our dream i think we're learning, learning what's to work with what we have i think we're learning what's possible and how to work with what's possible and just feels I defeating having this illusion that everyone's house is like square mm -hmm. level and perfect and learning that nobody's is yeah and that's okay, I yeah. guess. That said, nothing's wrong, right? We right. just have to, like, this is all fine. We had a mistake, we corrected it. Yep. Um, our wall's leaning in, but that's what these zuckles are for, yep. right? We'll get it fixed. And we're not to the point where we need to push it out. So at this no. point, I say the sun has set. It's yep. t-shirt weather, take off your hat. Yay. And I doubt we'll get. Here goes my hat. I doubt we'll get the back wall done before dark, but we can try. All we can do is work hard every day. Well, scratch that idea. We're done. And why we're done, I don't even know that we want to share right now. Do we want to share this right now? Maybe we'll share in the morning. Let's say tomorrow's video will be on why we stopped right now. That's a good idea. Maybe I, maybe I should tell you in the morning. Cliffhanger. There will be 
there will be more clarity and yep. less bumbling. We're very hungry. Yeah. We were hoping to work until dark, which was about 9 o'clock. So we had to stop a little bit early, but we haven't eaten since 8, so... Yeah, we hit a snafu, and that snafu has kept us running in circles, calling and texting people for the last three hours. So, why postpone nutrition? Exactly. It only makes us more grumpy. Ask Kelsey. Kelsey yeah. knows. Kelsey, <laughs> Kelsey says, does know. you need to eat snacks. You get angry. <laughs> and we still she haven't is learned. is right. Oh, but guess, we don't do it. guess what I found. Huh. I was looking to see if we had more Trader Joe's seasoning for our veggies and I found mm. my hidden stash of coconut cashews. Things are amazing. I was going to ask my mom to send us some, but now we don't need to. End of the day win. It's kind of fun when you like <laughs> do the squirrel thing and you kind of stash <clears throat> yep. snacks. And it then later well, on you're looking, find them. <laughs> yeah, later on you're looking for, I don't know what, Dixie cups or something. And you find snacks. And you find Woo! ginger. Yep. And then you don't tell Jesse and you sit there and eat it all and I come in and you have a little chocolate ginger, on your chocolate face. Mustache. All right, let's eat dinner, let's regroup, and let's try to sleep. And we'll do it, all of this more Again. fun tomorrow. Sounds good. Yay. So last night, Alyssa and I had had enough. We were tired. Uh, it's been a long day. Seems like, and I don't know why this happens, and I, I probably could figure it out if I looked at patterns. <laughs> Phone calls and emails and chores and things seem like we can't ever get out here the first thing in the morning unless you just don't pick the phone up or don't look at your computer. That solves that. So last night we were pretty tired because for some reason, another pattern, problems seem to always develop around three o'clock in the afternoon. Maybe that's because most people get tired by three o'clock in the afternoon. And it's the heat of the day and problem solving becomes more difficult, tiredness sets in. But we spent a little time, had some dinner, kind of nourished up, talked about it a little while. I tried a few things and we've come up with a plan for how to solve the out of plumb on our north wall. We've been yammering about this gap. You can't see it very well because it's in the shadow right there. And it turns out off camera last night, we spent a lot of time just trying to work through this. We ran a plumb bob from this corner down. And it turns out that per block as you go up, this wall is coming out of plumb about an eighth of an inch per block. Funny, that's exactly that gap. I'll try to keep this brief, but basically light form their installation technique is to have a common seam, floor to ceiling. It just so happens that our building is in a two inch increment, which these blocks are in a two inch increment. So if our wall back here were plumb, that gap would not exist and these blocks would fit perfectly. Most buildings are not in two inch increments. We just happen to have one and that's why we thought their blocks would fit perfectly and they would, except our back wall is not level. So after a good amount of time, we started checking things. And I said, there's no way this gap is going to close unless this corner comes up to help close that gap. That's just how squares work. That would be bad because this wall is, our north wall is dead level. In fact, in this corner, both walls are plumb and our east wall is dead level or darn darn close. We think it might be about an eighth of an inch uh, high right where that step down is. But look, that block fits perfectly, right? And this block has fit almost perfectly. That means that these two walls are very happy walls. So if we raise this corner, that's gonna jack up this wall and the east wall. What a mess. This is a situation where if you do it wrong, you'll create a tremendous amount of work for yourselves on top of what you already have. There's a theory, you can either shim two walls or you can cut one wall. We talked about this for quite a while and we brought the laser level out to, to confirm what we kind of suspected. And it turns out that our west wall from the step down to the corner is one half inch high. This corner, if you thought about it, it, seems like it's low. And it turns out this corner is correct. So is our east wall. For some reason, somehow, this west wall is a half an inch high. So we screwed up. And it's gotta be the forms because I know that we, we did very, we tried very hard to float those forms to level, being the most critical thing. So what's happening, the uh, wall is actually rising 
to meet that half an inch because we set the height on our step down to be 16 inches because that's the height of the ICF block. The conclusion we've come to after trying to push and heave and do a bunch of other stuff on this wall, it is the least of all evils to finish stacking the walls and then we're going to make a relief cut in the third row that will be a wedge. That will actually cause this wall to drop and that gap to close. The net effect though is that from the step down uh, to the southerly side, that wall is gonna be a half an inch too tall. That's easy to fix. All we have to do is run our laser on the top of the wall and trim that wall to the correct height. Cutting foam is very easy. Shimming walls is very time consuming. I'm not sure if, I, I don't even know, this hall hasn't even sunk in yet. I'm not even sure we could have identified this early on with our lack of experience. If we would have lasered our footings, <clears throat> we would have known. If we would have double checked those before we started building on them, we would have known this was a problem. And it didn't become obvious until now. And if it would have been a quarter of an inch, I think we probably could have got away with it. But being one half inch high has created a substantial problem with the wall. And the reality of it is that half an inch is forcing our north wall to be out of plumb. That's a bigger problem because that gap represents the uh, amount of out of plumb our rear wall is. So we're going to make a strong attempt to fix that today. I'm actually gonna jump on the phone with Lightform and confirm all these details with them, make sure that they're aware of our plan and strategy, see if they see any holes in our plan. Uh, and then hopefully Alyssa will be out here and we can get to work. Uh, for what it's worth, really quick, the reason shimming this up I just restate this. Shimming this up would mean we have to shim this wall and this wall. That would be an absolute nightmare. We already have our drain tile and rock and fabric behind these two blocks. There's rock up about this high. You're not going to get to that block on the outside. It would be an absolute nightmare to have to shim these walls. So that's another reason it's not gonna happen. Well, it looks like Casey is actually unavailable at the moment. So let's jump to work here. Um, something I wanna test, this wall is actually out of plumb, uh, but it's okay, we need to adjust it. So that's why we put these turnbuckles here on the upper side of this brace. So the turnbuckle there, and we need a, a ratchet driver with an extension to turn that. And the net effect is we'll be pushing this wall out at the top. So we need to get that done. I wanna make sure that this wall is fairly true before we start attaching more bracing. And then it's time to keep working around the corner. So we need to get the plating and fascia on here. I haven't decided what we're gonna do with the buttress yet, it's not clear. And then we'll keep working our way around the corner. And then that should allow us to stack our sixth row and finish rows five and six on this side. Well, the fit. Yeah. So we're only going to the sixth row on the buttress, right? So just one more row with the T block and then we're done with the buttress.
for the sledgehammer for 20 minutes now. And I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when you're looking for something, it suddenly turns into a very um, spontaneous cleaning spree. It's either in bed, because Alyssa kept it in her pocket, or something. But I think Alyssa may subconsciously be hiding tools now to keep us from getting this house built. I'm not really sure. Apparently, cleaning happened because I finally, after, you know, two weeks, picked up a bunch of rock that was all through here that you're tripping on every time. So I'm totally guilty of blaming Alyssa. It was my fault. I left the sledgehammer behind the building last night. Ready? Yep. Good catch. So this was my attempt last night. Stake this, turnbuckle, tried to push this wall to close that gap, but it's just too rigid. It's very rigid right here because all these blocks are interlocked and you know what? The wall's doing what it's supposed to do. It's just doing it at a slight angle. So here's hoping somewhere in there we can make a relief cut and drop that wall down. In the meantime, I found a whole bunch of stuff up here that I must have just gave up on last night. <laughs> oh geez. Oh, there's the sledge. Gloves. Tools. I think before we have children, we should definitely not have high stress situations because Apparently, when I'm in high stress, I just leave stuff wherever I put it. <laughs> I'd be like, where's, where's Johnny? All right. Last blocky block on the buddy buttress. Somehow, we got to get scaffold up there. That's going to be hard to do because these boards, we oiled them and they were already big boards, so they're pretty heavy. done. Looks like Jesse's working on getting our scaffolding up. That's pretty exciting. So I think next I can work on putting the zonts on this wall, yeah. right? Yeah, let's and do it all at once. Let's do zonts, bracing. Okay, well we, and, we can uh, only work on one section of wall at a time. Unless I go ahead of you with zonts. Oh, I mean like the, the in-wall bracing and the, right. and the <laughs> rebar. That can be done all at once. Okay. We actually decided we're going to go ahead and put the last two rows on, the east wall, and then we're just going to focus on bracing. I don't know about you guys, but if you try to do too much at once or too much as you go, it starts to get overwhelming, so sometimes it is best to just pick one task and do it all the way around the building. This is really funny and worth mentioning. We're now referring to this as a building. That's really exciting. That's Before we were calling it the home site and now it's graduated to building. It's moved its tassel. Yeah. But it's not a house yet. We should update our Facebook status. Totally. To like building. It's feeling building. How are you feeling today, Jesse? Building! <laughs> I feel like a building! Let's flip it. Let's... Hey, guess what? Hmm. I found shade. Holy cow, there's a windstorm for you. It feels good. And she stands. Give your worst wind. We have Zont and Zuckle bracing. Thank <laughs> you. 
Too tall to cut, huh? Uh, I gotta put my big boy pants on. Here's the last piece of the sixth course. Crap. Cool. Um, I think I can stay up here and add the zonts to this wall. Okay. Thoughts? I'm already up here. Here's your zont assembly kit. Cool. Ready? Yeah. It's gonna have to come towards me about six inches. <laughs> it's, I'll work on it, it's stuck in the middle. I need to lift it. So we didn't have to flip then, right? Nope. I thought this end, this is the end of the down. I bet you thought we were done with steaks. I kind of did. I kind of thought we could get rid of these. Not get rid of them, but give them to a concrete guy. And nope. Oof, starting on a rock. Ouch. Is that a rock? What isn't a rock? Wow, look at the soil bounce. End of game. That's pretty good. For tonight. Uh, I should probably stake this one. I think it'll be fine. These okay. two are staked. Okay. Staking it tonight's not gonna help. Part of me wishes we would have put at least a brace or two on here, but we ran out of screws. We have screws, but I don't know why everybody gotta be dumb and make T20, T25, T30. Why can't they just flip and make one size a bit? So I think we're gonna try to return those screws in the morning and get T20 because it's absolutely obnoxious trying to change bits all the yeah, time. Yeah, totally, this job's hard enough. All right. So I think on that note, yeah. shower, dinner, stretch, sleep. But first, good job. We hammered out, and by we I mean mostly Alyssa, the sixth row all the way around. Yeah, and we I, are closing I thought it would in. be reasonable to finish this side. You can see now why I said no way. We, we could do it. Oof but something would what be What a push, yeah. 
So we got bracing on all the way around to where we're sitting. And so tomorrow we got to plate this concrete down here, which is no small task. Clear a lot of this stuff out because it's going to be tighter than a insert random tight analogy. And then hopefully we'll actually get our scaffold up over there. And then it's time to put on the last two rows. Think we can do that tomorrow? I think we can do that tomorrow. I think so. <laughs> I'm not really sure how fun putting 5 8 rebar that's bent is going to be over all this wild bracing that's like flying in the sky. I think for some stuff we can feed it through the corners. So set up the tall ladder and just like feed it through outside, Very good outside idea. of the house. All right. It's been fun, y'all. Hasta mañana. super early in the morning. I've been pushing myself to do early mornings, but it's hard because if you've watched our 10 ugly truths about living in an RV, you know that when you're on different sleep schedules, nobody sleeps well. So Alyssa has been staying up after we work hard all day to get video edited. And so I don't think she got to sleep before midnight but here it is about 5.30 in the morning, so I would not at all expect her to be up. In fact, you know, to be quite honest with you, I don't think we we knew, but it's, it's definitely more work than we expected to document uh, this process. Just the process is hard, or just documenting is hard, but doing both, wow, it's become quite quite the accomplishment. We're pretty proud of ourselves. I'm really proud of Alyssa. Uh, so where are we at this morning? We kind of left off. We just petered out. I don't know how hot it was yesterday, but in this white box, it just from three to five, you're done. So let's see if we can put in maybe five or six hours this morning uh, in the cooler temperatures. We'll still get sun over here by about 9 30 or 10. So bracing is all in on the north wall and we can start on the east wall very close on that I need to finish the plating here on the footing and then i've got three scaffold brackets so i can build those strong backs and then i think i might be at a point where i could actually make a town run we bought screws uh one inch or inch and a quarter screws and it really annoys me that if you don't look carefully you'll buy one company's screw and it's a t25 bit and then you buy another company's screw, it's a T20 bit. These are T20s, so they're going back because I hate having to find two different bits all the time running around a job site. I'd rather just get T25s. I really don't think it's gonna take us very long to stack rows seven and eight. Uh, row seven doesn't have anything in it, so it's just block. And row eight is rebar and bracing. That means that today, maybe, we can start working on getting these end caps installed. This is gonna have some pretty good pressure on it as we pour the concrete. <clears throat> Our concrete guy actually swung by yesterday, which was unexpected, but very helpful. And then he even recommended actually capping out so that when this concrete goes pouring in here, it doesn't wanna splooge out right here. And then I think we're going to use some strapping. And I'm gonna kinda of look at what they have at the hardware store. I could probably use plumber's tape. I might look at uh, some Simpson brackets. They have some Simpson straps, so that might be necessary. We've gotta cap the buttress, and then we need a little bit of time to work on the penetration over here for the sewer. And then we've gotta locate one other penetration on the east wall, and that's for our boiler. Uh, right now, we're going to leave the door open for ourselves to use a central boiler outside because wood heat is just wood is just so prevalent for us that we want to keep it as our primary heat source. But the nice thing about radiant, which is what we'll be using for our primary heat, is that you can put redundant systems in. So we'll probably have some sort of propane or natural gas boiler that's uh, a backup and will allow us to go on vacation. <laughs> we don't have to sit there and feed the wood boiler.
I'm sorry. That's good. I tried to sneak out. I know. So just uh, doing a budget inventory here, need to go to town, but unfortunately what makes you go to the hardware store is you need something very specific. But I've learned to kind of stop and take a quick inventory and try to, you know, foresee what's going to happen ahead and just double check all of our supplies. Uh, for example, I counted off all these brackets and everything when I first got them. Just want to make sure that we actually have enough because wouldn't that be terrible if at two o'clock we ran out of brackets. Doing a lot of that stuff and uh, because we're working on ICFs and we're working on such a tall scaffold, uh, I wanted to make sure that our pump guys are, are cool. Uh, they've got a lot of experience and they, and, I, and they know what they'll pump. So I don't want them to show up here. We've got trucks on the way and now we've got all kinds of stress because they see some problem with, you know, how it's scaffold. Because, I mean, they've got to hold the line pump up, up that high. I don't know how much that line weighs but it's heavy it's full of concrete so hopefully get them to stop by today sounds like they've got a job in the area um, so kind of squaring up for the day i think Alyssa's ready to, to jet to town and then we can get finalize all this bracing then hopefully we can jump up on the scaffold get the hand railing installed and eventually get those last two rows of block installed we're definitely not going to pour tomorrow but if we have all the materials on hand i think Alyssa and i can push through the weekend basically ready to go to town Yes. Okay, cool. Holy cow, maybe the president's calling me. Washington, D.C. Dude, what if it is? Maybe he wants to be on our bloggity blog. Right. Or our ubity tube. Oh, sorry. Missed your call, president. Maybe next time. Sorry, I'm building a house. All right, material run is complete. Unfortunately, we struck out on T25 screws. Instead, we just bought a few extra T20 bits. I have to say, one of my favorite little inventions is these little magnetic trays for keeping things organized. Um, yes, on that side. Bashed my head on all the lumber sticking out of the truck. So of all this dangerous work that we're doing, that's when you hurt yourself. So hopefully that doesn't stop us from having a good day today. We ended up buying a bunch of 12 foot two by fours. For our angle braces, we were using 14 foot lumber, yeah. except we have our piers in the middle, or actually it's offset to this side of our building and 14 foot lumber will most certainly run into them. Time for the ice pack switcheroo. Alright, it's time to go crazy with flying strongbacks. We've officially both bashed our heads already. Once today each, and it's pretty early. For now, hats have been canceled.
Yeah. Let's put three per row. So you'll put this overlap them. So the time has come to make this relief cut over here. My strategy is not crazy sophisticated, but in this third row, there's no rebar and no bracing. And this cut needs to go all the way to the corner and it needs to go somewhere in the middle of the block because there are ties here and here. In here, there's nothing. So <clears throat> what I wanna do is I wanna run a line so I'm gonna use the one, two, three, four, fourth line. It looks like I'm gonna have to remove this zont. So I'm gonna run a chalk line to this fourth line. One, two, three, four. And this is gonna be my flat line. Got it. And then what I need to do is I need to make another line at the other end from this same line and I need to take out the half an inch of gap that we have right there. And then I need to replicate this on the other side. And if I make a relief cut right there and cut that wedge out, and in theory these blocks will drop and then this will all come plumb. That corner will come plumb, that gap will close. We will have a half an inch too high on the rest of the west wall, but Alyssa is gonna trim that on the top of the blocks because it doesn't matter. This wall over here is just a half an inch too high. Before Jesse makes the relief cut, I am ready for more block. So she needs a short block. That'd be one of these. Uh oh. Is that scary or what? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> don't don't show Casey at light form this video. This will make him cry. He'll be like, yeah. our beautiful box. Yep. He'll be like, nah, we just went DIY on it. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> Relief cut is in place and Alyssa's up top with her whaler board. It's gonna be kind of challenging because there's a couple of rows of in-wall bracing and so that wall's gonna take some love to get it to sit down. Huh? Keep going. That did something. Keep going. Hey, hold on. The gap on the outside's not big enough, okay. so I need to like widen that gap. How big is the gap on the top of the, the blocks between um. the two blocks? Close to half an inch, maybe a little less. Okay, let me go outside and trim a little bit more and then I'll okay. have to do it again. Okay, let's try. Um, hold on, hold on. Okay, that's it, you're good. Do we get it? I think we're there. Really? So we've dropped a half. Let me check this wall for plumb. It was off by like seven eighths of an inch, remember? It's really close. This gap may not have closed fully because it was like, I mean, we look back at the footage, but that gap was like almost an inch. We probably only closed the gap by half an inch. Nope, it's a quarter inch. That's right, it was it was like seven eighths, the gap was. If that corner's plumb, then this wall should be level. Holy smokes. It is. It's level. That'll do her. Then we'll take the half inch off that side at the top. This 
Our zonts are a little low now because we've lowered this wall. So we're gonna move them up just to be safe, even though it probably doesn't matter. For those who are interested, this is how half an inch starts to chase you. Yep. Because we're reusing this line right here as our reference for our zonts. But now this line is moving up. <laughs> That, that board will sit down better now, but see how that walls like yep. wants to go out real bad. Yep. So. Ready for a handrail? Okay. having a safe scaffold to run around on. It's yep. called a catwalk. I'll give you one guess why. <laughs> Let's just say we're not gonna show Bugadoo how to get up here. Let's just say it's not called a dog walk. Can you make it? <sighs> Do you have an eighth row in you? What if I call it the final row? Does that help? Just having the row on there will help, even though there's about five other housekeeping issues oh, totally. to do when we're yeah, done. There's still rebar. But it stuff. looks done. <laughs> yeah. All right. Gotta Back to work. Gotta keep moving. It's not going to get done if we stand here and film all day. So I think you should just call it a day right now. So yeah, come down, wash up, I'll take you to dinner, we'll have a margarita, celebrate the seventh row. That sounds... I almost think every row deserves celebration. Basically, <laughs> yeah. and we did start the eighth row. And we started the so eighth we're, row. We're, we all, the eighth row is almost two thirds done, or one third done, yep. whatever. So you can't even count anymore. Come down off the scaffold, young lady. Oops. I'd say this is the walk of pride. I think so too. I'm following you all the way around so people know what it's like. Go ahead, take your victory lap down the ladder. You know what would be really fun is if that was a slide. <laughs> Boom. You killed it today. You did too. Yeah. We did good. Don't be fooled. Yeah. Just because Jesse wasn't up on the scaffolding. 
I was thinking that. I was thinking, ah, somebody's probably going to make a comment about yep. how I make my wife go up on the scaffold, but, um, man. There's I've, so much work to I have done. been humping you down here. You were in the sun bowl all day. Like, it's freaking hot in here. Yeah. Up there, at least there's a breeze. Um, yep. Passing materials up, cleaning up trash, staking, like... Jesse finished bracing all this this morning before the sun was up, before mm -hmm. I was out of bed, basically. Close, yeah. So. Good job today. This yeah, is the momentum we needed a week ago, mm -hmm. but we're finally picking up steam, yep. which is typical. Typically, the first few days on a project are just like, might as well just get a rock and bash your head against it for like a week, and then suddenly everything starts clicking. Yeah. So we do have some measuring and some leveling and stuff to do at the top of the wall. So life's not perfect, yeah, but. There'll be a couple days of tidy up for sure. Yeah, the weekend. I think we're good. So earlier, I used the backhoe to move lumber and rocks and a bunch of other stuff. So I think tomorrow I'm going to move those buckets with the backhoe because I'm too tired to move them with my arms. What are you doing up there, Buckaboo? Huh? Mom said you weren't allowed to see that. Yep. <laughs> Didn't take long, did it, Buckaboo? Hey, Rubalotopotamus, did you find the catwalk? Was it inevitable? Were you? Are you pretty happy about that? What are you doing? Huh? How'd you get up there? Huh? Hey, hey, don't get in there. You little stinker. Bugaboo, you coming down? Okay, I'll come get you. Huh? Are you ready to come down now? Are you? Huh? Booga fish? <laughs> You're so silly. Okay, we gotta get you down. Come on. Come on. What are we gonna tell mom about your little adventure on the catwalk? Huh? Should we even tell her at all? Oh, you just want to get in the zomp bucket? Okay, all right. I won't tell her if you won't, okay? We'll just keep it our little secret. Friday morning, beautiful day. Got up pretty early this morning and we actually have been having a hard time getting all of our cards cleared at night just because we're exhausted. We grabbed dinner last night, Alyssa and I had some ice cream and passed out. This morning I took a break from the camera and just got a lot of prep work done. We got all the lumber and everything cleaned up out of here. Moved all the block in that we need to finish the final eighth and final row. Got all the corners set. I started working on some of the 5 8 rebar, which the top row actually has two rebars in it uh, side by side and it's more like a grade beam or a bond beam. And it's a little more complex because our normal rebars, we've been bending around this corner right here. So it's a very sharp bend, it's one bend. But this corner out here is more radius. It's a longer, more gradual bend. So you couldn't do that and get the rebar in the same spot. So since the rebar need to be two inches in from the wall, I had to work on figuring out how to make a more gradual radius. And I finally did figure it out. I just used basically five bends to create these radiuses. I set this block over here as a way of just testing it. So I'd bend the rebar and then just check my bends on each one. Way easier than sticking them up there and having Alyssa test them at the top of the wall. Alyssa and I are pretty sure Monday morning's gonna be poor day. So we made the commitment this morning and ordered concrete and also ordered the pump truck. And it turns out both are available Monday morning. So it it's the eclipse. We're Is that the eclipse? the eclipse? <laughs> As it works, it's so, I don't care. I want this thing poured. I don't give a crap what day. I don't either, but other people do. What care. time is the eclipse? I have no idea. Someone will tell us. Maybe we'll pour this thing in the dark. I don't know. Uh, so the clock is ticking. Start the, to the timer. And I was sitting and making a to-do list this morning, and it's still pretty substantial. But here's the thing. We want to go into our pour on Monday rested-ish. You don't want to be burned out, wake up, kind of stumbling all over yourself trying to pour concrete. So we're going to try to do like maybe eight-ish hour days or so the next three days. That way we're getting some rest. We're kind of recuperating. And Monday hopefully will be not too stressful. You're looking a lot better this morning. You don't quite have that like bushwhacked look about you. I've got you pretty much set up, I think. So um, I can work on handing block and stuff up to you. Yeah, we have a lot of other errands to run in town today too. So um, we'll kind of work for a little while and kind of try, our goal today I think is to get the eighth row stacked, rebarred, braced. You ready to go? Yes. All right. 
If you see kitty cat prints on the catwalk, Bugaboo doesn't know anything about it. He He's pleading the fifth. I did realize something. We are gonna have to buy more rebar. I'm realizing now that when we cut these little verticals right here, we could have actually cut the verticals, the long verticals for the wall, and then used the excess to make these little shorties. But we didn't. We just cut full lengths to make the shorties. So now we've got 20 foot lengths of rebar, but our wall is 12 feet, which sucks. So every time we cut one of these rebars, we're gonna have an eight footer left over. Big lesson learned there. Really look at the scope of the job and try to figure out how to maximize your materials. We probably could have come out of this with next to nothing for rebar. And now we're gonna have to buy just a few rebars to finish this. And then we'll have a bunch left over. A lot of people have asked how we're going to close off this uh, area for concrete and the plan right now is to build basically a form a piece of plywood with two by fours with plywood that we will strap to the end cap here and it will be strapped around to the ICF. That's less important than how they pour. How they pour will be the biggest factor. Um, I'm hoping that what we'll do is kind of seal off, you'll hear that term a lot with pouring concrete, this corner over here and let that mud kind of go off a little bit and set up. And then we'll pour in lifts. So we're gonna pour maybe two blocks or three blocks, something like that, and then let that mud set up. And then we'll pour up and let that mud set, etc. So what'll end up happening is the first bit of concrete will actually support the concrete above it and then so on and so on. So this form, all it has to do is hold back the pressure of the lift of mud. It's not like we're gonna be pouring 12 feet of constant concrete in one shot and that form has to hold back all that weight. Before I make mad progress on the eighth row, I have to pick up where I left off yesterday, which was getting the in-wall bracing on this seventh row here. We were trying to push this down with our hands, and yesterday I discovered that the heel is an option. It's a lot more effective. Alyssa is becoming quite wise to the shade management strategy. So she could either start over there in the sun, you or while there is some shade, she can work over here. She has chosen the shade. Final corner block. Yep. Wait. What? That's the wrong corner. Flipped upside down. Oh, ha! Yay! I wasn't too sleepy this morning. That's the final row, y'all. Final row. You zip tied all the seventh row, right? Yep. Oh, okay, and I forgot something. We need to actually put rebar in the top row of the buttress. Oh. It's already been bent, and I'm pretty sure that it can just be hooked in there because there's nothing preventing it from just hooking in. Okay. Because it doesn't have to go between any of the other rows, it goes on the top, so. Yep. When you get over there, just let me know, and I'll hand it up to you. going to be quite the quite the day dismantling all this scaffolding my gosh <laughs> maybe we'll build a tiny house out of all the lumber you ready for some water okay and then I have a zippy tie for you too about that I will try it'll probably not go Ooh. time to check on our 
ice condition. All right, they're still frozen. Good stuff. Um, we'll switch all this stuff out, even the gel pack. Uh, there's a little bit of ice left in that gel pack. Ooh, there's two Gatorades too. Piece. This might be the very last block we will ever stack in our lives. Sorry, no dramatic moment. Got it in. It fits. Have to do a little foam here, but that's okay. It feels really amazing to have this eighth row on. I'm pretty happy we didn't do it last night. I think it's just a row of foam. So it seems like it's not that big of a deal. And it's really not, but I'd say it took me another full hour at least just to get that on. Um, and that's not even including the rebar. So, wow, so much dirt in my face. So we're gonna get the rebar laid in next. We're not positive that we have enough. So we wanna figure that out early in the day so we can go get more if we need to. We have a straggler. A straggler, ready? Come on, straggler. Ah! To the straggler pile you go. Send me the ice hook. Um, we could probably send this down. I don't think we need this. Yeah, ready? Uh, um, yeah, you'll be able to visually tell if the rebar overlap or not, so. Alyssa has confirmed that our wall, back wall, is on the money. And I didn't Wait. just say that. Right on the money. We're gonna publish this. So for the, for the top row of rebar, there's two rebars. One on the inside, one on the outside. So I'm gonna hand you one that's got a really tight bend and that tight bend goes on the inside. And then I'm gonna hand you one with a sweeping bend and that sweeping bend goes on the outside. Let's see, two foot lap, sweeping bend. This guy. You know what? I'm gonna try to hand this to you back there. This is pretty heavy and you walking on that scaffold with it's pretty, pretty ridiculous, so. Wow, this stuff's massive. So if you can get it balanced, I'm holding on, I'm holding on. Okay, go ahead and go to the corner. And this is a tight bend. Peace. 
Hey, you got it? So this is going here? Nope, it's gonna go in that back sweep in the far far wall. Okay. Good. Beautiful. You look so tiny, Jesse. Yay! Wow. So we're gonna take a little break. It's really hot and we need to get some rebar um, and some other things and it's Friday afternoon so I figure yeah. we need to make the errands that we need to do now. With a Monday pour, pour we've got to get all the... Monday any, morning pour. Anything to do with... Uh, yeah, Monday morning for it. Anything to do with businesses, we got to get it today. Because yep. a lot of these businesses aren't open on the weekends. And Home Desperate doesn't have a lot of this stuff. So, we'll um, be back in a little bit. Just looking for some kitty cat prints to see if there's any evidence that Bugaboo made another visit to the catwalk. Uh, this dirt would be an immediate giveaway. So, I'm guessing... He didn't make another foray. Those are thank me laters. Ooh. Got a bunch of, a bunch of them. Yeah. I love it. These are still pretty icy. Yep. So it's a good thing we decided to uh, call it early yesterday. We went and had a lunch date, which was really nice. It's good fun to just eat a sandwich with Alyssa, something we never do. Um, I did track down some rebar. A lesson we've learned there I'll just share with you, if especially with the bigger rebar, number four, our uh, bender cutter will shear it, but the number five, we can't, we can't get it. And so we found a steel and recycling place that carries all kinds of steel. And they can cut this stuff super easy. They've got this crazy chop saw that can just, you know, deal with it. Um, so instead of just buying the stuff, the, the big stuff, and having them cut that, I had them cut everything that we needed beyond our current supply. So today I still need to cut something like 55 vertical rebars, which sucks. <laughs>
probably wait a little bit to hand you zonts, right? You're pretty cluttered up there. You've got bracing and rebar. and for probably 15 minutes. Yeah, so let's wait to put stuff up yeah. there so you're not tripping over a bunch of stuff. Yeah, that works. Okay. I think some wire ties would probably be good to tie these together. I absolutely hate these things. They're supposed to make your life easier and... I don't know. I guess it's not bad. I guess I don't hate them that much. That's pretty good. Again, we're adding this rebar in because to beat a code, you should have two feet of overlap. And this rebar doesn't have any overlap. In fact, there's like a six inch gap. This rebar here only has about an eight inch overlap. So better safe than sorry. <laughs> Liquid of life. Yeah, I'm trying to drink a lot more Sustaining today. Sustaining life on this project. And then it's time for the Zont toss. The Should we count in Spanish? We've been putting the Zonts at this top line here. But since we're planning on cutting the top of this block to make it level all the way around the building, we're probably gonna put it on line, mm, I think Jesse said maybe line three. That's not too bad. Are you trying to figure out how to get up here? Hey, buddy. You gotta hold on better, okay? You good? You good? Okay. Jesse's work, work, working away down there. And I have finished attaching all the zonts. Went pretty easy, it was pretty straightforward, and now we get to attach the whalers. We're leaving a little space here, we're not making it flush because we're planning on bringing this wall in a little bit to make it plumb. What do we have here? This looks like breakfast to me. What's pretty cool is we have shade in here most of the day, except like noon. Yeah, it moves around right now. Two o'clock is about the worst from two to five. And then it starts stiffing behind the back wall. There's some mercy. Thanks for breakfast. Yep. <laughs>
Wow, I don't know if you can feel that or not, but you're the camera you're viewing us on right now is scorching hot. Uh, so we're doing really well. We've got the bucks built for the garage door opening in the front and they're looking pretty stout. Uh, but we ran into a problem. We have screws that are too short and too long. So we need to get screws, but we thought we'd take a moment and just do another quick inventory looking for any last minute purchases to get us through the pour. And it turns out we need a little bit of extra plywood to get the buttress buck done. And then we wanna do some just precautionary peace of mind strapping on the back wall. We've got some common seams kind of staggered back there. So we don't want, we, we just don't wanna to have to worry about that. It's high up, it's in the back, it's all this stuff. So if we can just strap some plywood over those areas, the forms will probably hold, but gosh, we just don't wanna be those guys. Well, here's hoping we're not those guys. <laughs> Uh, and then we've got a couple other pieces of materials. We want to get what's called a blowout kit. Uh, it's basically all thread with some um, nuts and washers and a few extra pieces of plywood just to have around. In case a block starts to bulge, you can stab uh, all thread through and put some washers and nuts on some plywood to just reinforce the form. So we're gonna run and do a supply run and then we're gonna get back to work. Our theory is to not leave ourselves too much tomorrow, whatever that means, so that we don't have to put in a 16, 12 hour day the day before the pour. <sighs> well, we made it back from supplies and uh, one of those wind gusts just came up just blew this block of foam off the top of this we really got to get concrete in these forms uh lissa is actually going to get a video published for you guys and then she's going to come help me with vertical rebar i need to get caught up to her we need to get all this stuff cut we got to get this stuff cut down and i was going to try to do that when it was cooler out but here we are so i might still do that i don't know we really want to get the rebar in before we work on plumbing the walls and I really would like to get them plumbed today so that tomorrow, maybe at the latest, we can work on trimming the top of the wall. Guess we're working through the heat of the day today. Cutting rebar for me. You betcha. Taller ones go on this side of the step oh, down. Oh, and shorter ones go on this side. Shorter ones go okay. anywhere past the step down. Sleepy people shouldn't be on top of scaffolding, but I had a chai with coffee in it, like a caffeine infused chai. So hopefully that'll give me the kick I need to not fall off the scaffolding. Oh, you got it. That's perfect. First okay, shot. And it's, it's dead even with the top. Of the, the top of the wall? Yeah. That's bad. No, not the wall, the rebar. Oh. Perfect. Oh, whew. Don't scare me like that. Hot Kay. diggity dog. Sweet deal. Casey, your idea of putting little PVC collars at the bottom to make putting rebar in easy? Golden. Yeah. One of the most popular questions on Facebook and um, honestly, I don't read YouTube comments, so has been how the heck are you going to close off the garage door openings? Most of the day I have been working on basically building the fourth side to the forms. Um, a lot of people call these bucks, door bucks, window bucks. The major challenge in theory, if we pour this correctly, the pump We'll start pouring mud somewhere down here and hypothetically it'll actually flow into this corner here so we won't be dropping mud straight down that's not how that's not the proper way to pump concrete uh, with a line pump you can do this stuff a boom pump from what we understand is not so easy so we'll flow concrete into this corner and then leave it and let it 
start to go off a little bit. And ideally, I need to figure out when the pump guys get here, we're actually gonna leave all this buck stuff off. We're gonna, we're gonna put the flanges on, but I need to find out if we need to pump this frost wall on the front side first and kind of fill that corner up and then put the buck on. Then we can go up top and fill it in. Either way, this portion of the buck is in case this concrete back here decides to let go and it kind of splooges out. Uh, we're gonna strap this over the top of this form. So if it decides to splooge out, it's gonna splooge out to the height of the form. And then by the time it gets out here, it'll just be flowing, hopefully. We shouldn't have any crazy overflow. Then, so this sits flush on the form. We've actually cut the keys off of this portion just for test fitting. These will all get cut off eventually. So then that rests here up against the opening. And then this buck sits down on top of it, which really tightens that corner. You got all this weight pushing down on this. We'll have strapping over the top. We're mounting these fascia plates that are screwed into the studs on the ICF. And then we'll be attaching to this buck through the plywood. And that buck is actually taller than the wall. We will actually, we don't need all that, but that was an easiest, easiest thing to build was a 12 footer using 12 foot two by fours and an eight sheet, uh, eight foot sheet of plywood. So then I've drilled out for the rebar. I'll probably put just a squirt of spray foam in each of those openings so we don't get concrete coming up and out. And I oiled the forms on the face so that the concrete side should release fine. So far, all the screws are accessible on the outside, so removing this should be pretty simple, removing this should be simple, and then removing this should be fairly simple. One of the challenges is gonna be getting that concrete to fill underneath this form. That's why I think we may have to fill this up first and then put this buck on. Once it's floated, then put this on. But I'll leave these fascia plates installed. So it's a matter of just slipping this over that, sticking this on and throwing some screws in there. I hate doing things on poor day, <laughs> God. But it's just, that's just sometimes how things have to be done. And we've learned that from some of the stuff we've already worked on. Finally, we're going to run some triangulation here, some bracing. We'll probably brace, I'm thinking at least once here and maybe even a second time here on each side to the inside of that form. So we'll have a couple of braces there. And then I've got a few 16 foot two by fours that I'm not using. So I may run an additional brace to the top and run it down to a turnbuckle. Turnbuckle just maybe if we ever needed to adjust it somehow, which I highly doubt, but give yourself the option. Hopefully if you pour this in lifts, the amount of force exerted on each phase of the wall is less and less and less because this, the concrete underneath it should be supporting the concrete going on top of it, ish. When you pour new mud on top of old mud, you run the risk of getting what's called a cold joint, which is where the two muds do not mix. And, you, and it, that's not the strongest thing. So you don't wanna do that if you can. You wanna kinda keep the muds flowing together. So you don't wanna wait too long between pouring lifts. It's kinda risky. We'll have to just see how Monday goes. But that's the short and skinny of door bucks. We'll be actually building a buck for the buttress also. Got a lot of work left to do. Alyssa's cruising. It's probably gonna take her a couple hours to finish that. It's not hard, but just time consuming. Alyssa's on like maybe the second or third to last rebar and she's like, uh, I don't see any rebar in the footing. And I'm like, what? There's no way. That's even humanly possible right now. We're 12 feet up on this ICFs. Turns out it's there. Just long day and it's hard to see down in there. She's looking in a 12 foot deep dark hole with no sun to help her. So, whew. One more. I think you have to cut one more. Oh, I got too excited too early. I thought I cut the last one. Alyssa says this is the last one. That would be 95 rebar cuts today. Last one. Going in the corner. And it's pretty good at dusk, but not too late in dusk. Because then it's too dark. <laughs> you need to put a flashlight on the end of your rebar. <laughs> Uh-oh. We only have eight minutes left on this camera. Uh -oh. All right, one last uh, tell on Jesse. So these bucks that I built, super proud of myself. I realized when I went to put the buck on the west side, that the plywood didn't match the lines going up the form. I thought to myself, what in the world? I mean, the plywood's not that crooked. 
and I realized that we haven't plumbed the walls yet. The wall is actually curving in because of all the weight of the bracing, etc. And we wanted to get all this stuff done and then plumb the walls in preparation for trimming them, etc. So I decided not to put the plywood bucks on this side or even the plywood um, fascia. And we're gonna have to take that fascia board back off because I can see with my eye that this is leaning in, gosh, probably over two inches at the top. Right idea, wrong order. So tomorrow morning we get to backtrack. The good news is that one's not on there yet. Are you all done? Yeah, can I come down? Yep, come down and punch your time card. Stop by. Uh, yeah, stop by HR. We'll give you a cookie and a package of Skittles for a job well done. Did I earn 0.32 hours of time off today? I was going to say, but you actually earned 0.2 hours of oh, va it. paid vacation today. It's called PTO. We abbreviate it out of respect for our workers' time. You can In use... a month, I could take a day off. Well, she can only use it when we say, because we're yep. the company. So it's, it's her paid vacation, and she can use it. We just get to say when. Good job. She's got mud on her face. This girl's a hard worker. This is my rebar guide. Yeah. I'd like put it against my cheek <laughs> and guide it in. <laughs> good stuff. Mm, pretty good, tired. Good work today, man. You too, she man. She crawled out of bed with this old fart today too, so <sighs> we're wrapping so, this sucker up. Can we get it all done tomorrow before the pour in? I'm actually hours. going to ask for help because there's a lot of just general stuff. Um, we've been talking to Lightform this evening. We planned on having a call with them tomorrow, like a FaceTime, to kind of walk them around the pour and have them just kind of look for things that could be problems and look over stuff, etc. And uh, they've been keeping up with the videos that we've been publishing. So they've already spotted a few things that we need to do. Thankfully, we can get materials yep. and stuff to reinforce and strengthen. We will get it done tomorrow. Monday's poor day. Yep. That's not Whether optional. Whether we're ready or not. The concrete people call and they're like, hello. You're like, hello. And they're like, ready or not, here we come. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> totally. That's for, they should do that. Should I do mean, that. that's how concrete works. Yep. Okay, this camera has got to be out of time. Yep. See you guys. Manana. Are you so, that dirty? When did you become a diesel mechanic? I don't even know how that happened. Kind of looked like my dad. My dad used to come in for dinner and I'm like, what in the world have you been doing? He's like, it's just changing the oil on the motorhome. Yep. You know? I get yeah. it. I get it. <laughs> rebar. Rebar is filthy. It is filthy. I don't even want to know how dirty. Well, look at me. These are our clean clothes. This shirt was clean this morning. Yeah. My mom used to say, go put on a clean shirt. And my dad would say, this is this is my clean shirt. That's so <laughs> I totally can understand now, Dad. I, I'm, I'm with you. I didn't understand it then, but I'm 110% on board now. Mmm, bacon. How else do you think we have the energy to build a house? Well, we haven't been eating breakfast. No. I might have got a little bit of chalk in the bacon. Uh oh. But I think the chalk is edible. There's chalk in there. <laughs> Remind me to get more little earplugs when we go okay. to the hardware store. Okay. Nice. Are you munching on bacon? No. It's time consuming to cook, but you're never happy when there's bacon around, right? Never sad. Do you taste the chalk? Do what? Do you taste the chalk? I don't even know what chalk tastes like. <laughs> so today is dedicated to being poor ready in 24 hours. We talked on the phone with Casey this morning for a while and he helped us kind of look at our structure to see if there were any problemed areas. And I wouldn't say we have any major problems, but there are places that we should probably reinforce. We have some plywood around. We might need to get some more tomorrow. So today is cutting of random lengths of plywood and pasting it everywhere. Cut and paste. Ruining perfectly good plywood. I think that having the support of Lightform has been very helpful because they work with their product a lot and so they know how much reinforcement's necessary. I think because Alyssa and I are so, I don't know what the word is, like <clears throat> head over heels for this stuff, we're trying really hard to do things right that we're very inclined to overbuild. Um, Casey even commented that <laughs> this this is probably like overkill, overkill. one of the strongest <laughs> door bucks yeah. he's ever seen. He said most people just put a piece of wood inside the foam and attach it to the studs and 
call, call it, a, it day. a day. That would have been a lot faster. Yep, it's okay. <laughs> and a though. lot cheaper. But it wouldn't have kept our door the right size. Mm. Because if you did that, you'd lose an inch and a half of concrete. So there's mm. that. Um, you probably could have shoved a piece of treated plywood in there or something. I don't know. Or treated wood in there. So it's helpful to have their support because you can look at these blocks and see where we've done damage and say, that's okay. Don't worry about that. Or put mm, a little yep. foam on it. Or that plywood, the crap out of that. <laughs> I think it's worth sharing because our experience has been consistent with this. When you have a set of house plans, I think for those folks who might not be experienced like we are, who are not experienced like we are not experienced, the illusion is that when you have a set of house plans, you now have an infallible set of plans that if you follow it to a T, your building will turn out perfect. You don't have to think anymore, just build the plan. Sorry, folks, this is not Ikea by a mile. The conversation this morning with Casey went something like this. Don't cut ties on ICF, that's not necessary. And I said, well then how the heck do you get the bent rebar in the thing? And he said, well if you do it that way, yes, that's the only way, but that's not the only way to get rebar in there. I'm like, oh. So it turns out a lot of uh, contractors will actually bend a 90 degree elbow and slide that in the corners to meet your corner overlap requirements. And then run straight pieces into those elbows meeting your lap requirements. We bent the rebar, the whole bar, and tried to slide it in and tuck the corner in, which you cannot do. So we had to cut the ties. This is one of those things where the house plans don't really represent real world building requirements. And there's always this gap between what's drawn and what's built. There's a term we've run into, it's called as built. That implies it's not as drawn. <laughs> so sometimes you have to go back and update the drawings to represent the actual building. That could be a nugget of gold for those folks out there who do hire someone to, to, to draw a set of plans, have it engineered, etc. You still need to ask a lot of questions and you might need to step outside of what's drawn to achieve the goal you're trying to achieve without doing damage to your building products. After talking about a strategy for a little while, Alyssa and I concluded that it would be best to put wood on the end cap of our buttress. We're gonna form this with a buck, but we need to put some sort of material here to kind of terminate the wall. I don't think we just want concrete sticking out here. And I talked about putting foam on the end. That would look nice. It would keep it from just being exposed concrete, but you can't really attach anything to foam. The foam that we have has no studs or anything in it, so you couldn't affix anything to it directly. So we talked about adding uh, a piece of wood which I think will work pretty well. Um, the only major issues is that I had originally planned on extending this buttress four inches so that we could capitalize on this final rebar dowel. So I'm having to notch out the, the wood that we'll be putting here for this rebar dowel. And then I think we can actually just push these corner rebar in slightly to be nearly flush with the end of this wall. So that'll work pretty good. A little bit more work than I anticipated. I guess a lot more planning would have been good for this buttress situation, but never built one before. So we'll get to work on building the end cap for that. And what we're going to do is just leave screws in it. And then when we pour the concrete in there, the concrete will form around the screws and that should hold it in. Jesse says we have to move this whaler east about two inches, and it looks like we can do that. It's about as much as he's gonna get. Ow. <sighs> Bugaboo was up on the catwalk again this morning when Jesse watched him go down this ladder on his own, very slowly and carefully. Before we go too crazy with uh, reinforcing, we need to plummet. I've been looking forward to this moment. It does appear to me that everything's leaning in a little bit at the top, which makes sense because this bracing system seems to pull it in pretty tight. And I'm really curious to see how it pushes out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna attach 
these boards to the ends of all the walls and we're gonna run a string over the top and then we're gonna measure and see how far out we're in we need to go. So next we're gonna use another piece of wood with the same dimensions and we're gonna run it along here. So you can see here, this is very pushed in. This is touching the string. My goodness. My muscles don't really want to be lifting stuff today. Lifted like 100 pieces of rebar yesterday. Yeah, that's not gonna work. It's just bowing out. And this didn't move that at all. Wow. What a crappy piece of wood. Look, at it. it's, by the time it gets up here, it's like a whole quarter turn. I'm gonna move this bu turnbuckle out. Hurry, Jesse, the concrete truck is coming in like 22 hours. Winter is also coming, hurry! Plan B is to attach these bowed boards to each other to straighten them out. Nothing, no. Jesse's decided to flip our zuckle to the other end because our stakes are moving. The whole thing is not working. It's like broken. Two things are going to happen. One, the turnbuckle is going to be on the bottom, which means I can get to it. Yeah, that's good. Without having to like yep. shoot the moon. And two, we can stake it way better Yep. with the turnbuckle on the bottom because it's got a dowel hole in it. All right, you ready for movement? Yep. Okay. Mom, it's very close. 16. Even with that 2x4 there, it still wants to bend like right here. So it turns out when we start cranking on this wall that's not even full of concrete yet, this board right here is warping and bending and twisting under compression. I don't know if we don't have any more 14s. I can try bracing it down here on the bottom. See if that helps. We'll just we'll just turn this into an eight by eight by the time we're all done. We've now just about made this a six by six. And let's go a little farther, huh? A little too much. Good. So Alyssa's been kind of check checkeroo. Wow, it actually is looking a lot better. But yeah, there's still still a little bit of a a really good way to check this would be a six foot level but we don't have one. We do have a four foot level. That's not completely true. We have our, uh, we call it our masonry level. It's not really a masonry level, but uh, let me see if I can find it real quick here. So this level has had a piece of wood attached to it. So it's more like a six foot level. Well, this level's no good. Let's try this one. <laughs> what in the world? Oh yeah, see, I don't know. I think this is why it was be became a masonry level because all the other bubbles are actually broken. Oh yeah, they're like massively not good. <laughs> so that up there is so ridiculously out of plumb, it's not even funny. So my level right now is, is plumb. Okay. So it looks to me like the top part still needs to come in. Oh, probably three quarters of an inch. Out, you mean? I'm sorry, out. What, don't be deceived by the string. The string only means it's straight. Yep. The string does not mean it's plumb. So before we can make any more adjustments, we've got to move these braces around. I think we ought to just take a brace break and just do them all because I can't, yeah, you can just be standing up there or you can be helping me. Well, we're on the umpteenth brace and we're making them all match the system we probably should have done in the first place. Oh, 
only three more to go. And then we're back to plumbing and leveling, which is where we were an hour and a half ago. Is it right there? Um, you're about half the width of this board. That's looking pretty good. Good. You can even come in a smidgen if you want. Good, good, good. That's pretty good. A little more. Uh, a little more. Good. That's good. Wall number three. Yeah, so in theory, if the corners are plumb and the wall's straight, the wall's plumb. This one we're gonna do a little bit differently. We're gonna try to plumb the corner first and then straighten the wall. Golden? Mm, nice. Ooh, right on the money. Wow, it's like you just need to let it all go. How are we looking? Sometimes you all just need to let it go. Let it go, <laughs> let it go. <laughs> a little loose. Keep checking. Keep checking. Keep checking. Okay. It's okay. Um, come in here. It's pretty good. That's good there. Good? Yeah, I think that's pretty plumb. It's pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. Dang, that's straight. Plumb? Yeah. Look at that. Dead on. And this gap, I mean, it's it's nice. Yay! You're dirty. That's better. Can you see now? Yeah. We got it all plumbed. It took Squared. a little bit of like just back and forth, but we're good. What we did was we knew this corner was plumb and square. So all we had to do was check the width here and make sure that's plumb. And then everything else was a no brainer after that. Didn't make any sense because we kept pulling the wall in. Yep. And I'm like, what? I know the wall's already leaning in. It needs to go out. Yay. On that note, we're going to get sandwiches. We have. We hath earned our sandwiches. Well, sandwich break turned into Home Depot break. <laughs> Everyone here on a Sunday is closed, so we had to go all the way to Home Depot to get more plywood and two inch screws. But we're back and the sun is completely clouded over. So we're gonna see how much work we can get done in a couple of hours. Jesse's gonna help me get set up to make our chalk lines. I think we decided we're not gonna cut the tops of our blocks until after the concrete is poured. Instead, we're gonna try to float to the chalk line. So this is why we bought a wall bracket kit. So this attaches to the wall bracket. We will attach this to the wall. This can be adjusted up. Oh, cool. So that it shoots above the wall. And then I'm putting your receiver on this little stake and we'll set this height mm -hmm. to the top of the wall in that back corner. And then you'll go around inside the wall and make Wait. a line where that height is. Mm, that'll work. It's very sensitive. Perfect. Oh wait, you're gonna need this. Oh, thanks. of the uh, to-dos that we're working on right now where we've got these orange spray paints. We actually had to clip this top tie to get our rebar in. So we're gonna be putting uh, 24 inches of plywood over this to strap it because the tie below it is still in place and the ties above it are in place. So by putting strapping over that, we're basically strengthening from here down to here and helping that to resist. It's not gonna blow out but it would probably have some propensity to bulge, especially being on the bottom row. So we've got a few spots to do around the building there, and we're gonna be doing inside and out where we can. There's some spots like in this back corner, we've already actually backfilled that with drain rock. And so it's up probably almost a block and a half. So that's gonna provide some force on the backside to help strengthen 
uh, during the pour. So I've got a few of those things to do. And then this common, or actually not a common seam, we're calling it like a relief cut where we severed this wall over here to bring it back into plumb. This is gonna have to have some strapping on the inside and outside. It's not such a big deal because it's basically like having a, two blocks. We just cut between them. All the ties are still intact and everything. So we're gonna do kind of just a sheet of plywood here and then on the outside. And I think that's probably knocking on eight feet. Um, we've got some L brackets. Uh, Lightform has advised us to basically make two by four L's to stick in here to reinforce that corner by the buttress on both sides. Um, we've got to get this buttress cap on. Lots of strapping. <laughs> and since we got the walls all plumbed and everything, once this is done, the strapping's all done, uh, we've got to get some foam in all the cracks and whatnot. And that really needs to be done tonight so that foam has time to set up. Hopefully, Alyssa's cruising on getting the uh, chalk line set on the inside of the forms. What's that? Meh, Alyssa's patience is kind of wearing thin for the old laser now. <laughs> And then a good neighbor stopped by to give us a little bit of a hand this evening. Very thankful for his extra help. And then he's volunteered to come by tomorrow morning and just be on hand for all the excitement for the poor. So busy this evening. We're going to be working until we can't work anymore. It's about eight-ish. Okay. Well, can you see? I can see you. Can you see me? I think our worst fears are becoming a reality. The sun's going down and we're not done. We're not ready. We don't have much, maybe. It's not that we're not. Yeah, we're under, not ready. Under an hour? Probably close. An hour. So, okay. bright and early in the morning. I don't know. I say get out put on headlamps. Ounce. Wake up at 6. Get up at 6. Okay. Probably 5.30. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not too much. Thankfully, we've had a little bit of help, which has caught us up, I think. If okay. without that, we'd have been pushing, but... Yeah. Cameras probably can't see anymore, so we'll probably work for another half hour maybe. Yep. And then uh, eat, shower, sleep, rinse, and repeat. We'll be back at it bright and early in the morning. Tomorrow's poor day. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> ah! No pressure. <laughs> um, don't forget to bring that laser in for sure. Okay. Let's not leave it out. Just oh, yeah, I'll go get that still. now. Yeah, it hasn't rained in a couple Shouldn't months. Shouldn't be on the scaffolding at night. It hasn't rained in a couple months, so I don't know why it would rain tonight. But right, well, it's it cloudy. Poor, it's poor day tomorrow, so, you know, I mean, like... It'll probably rain. It'll probably rain. <laughs> it's going to be windy and uphill. Yeah, good job today. You too. Good job getting these things plumb and square. That's pretty exciting. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, running the chalk lines tomorrow, and then mud. How much mud? Eleven. $5,000 in mud. Whew. Dropping 5 Ouch. Gs tomorrow. Gonna have to add some zeros to our checkbook. I don't know if our checkbook goes that high. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll see you tomorrow. The tour is tomorrow. Ah! Ah! Are we being dramatic? No. Not really. Never give up. Almost done. Finishing by headlamp in true pre-pour fashion. Is, this is the first of many times we'll do this. Oh yeah. I don't know what it is about concrete. I think it's because you have to involve so many people. Hopefully most of the rest of our build will not be like this, but. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, the slab might okay. be this way, but. Yeah, the slab, maybe. It's like, yeah. by night time, the truck is coming. Yeah. If it's late, it's a problem. If it's early, it's a problem. Yep. If things go wrong, now your concrete's trying to cure on you. Yep. Okay. Um, actually, if you want to get the water heater on and all that, that'd be great. I was just going to throw these zuckles on real quick. It's not a big deal. The tour is tomorrow. Ah! Hurry, make the coffee. Mm -hmm. We have concrete truck comes at nine. Ring, and ring, ring, the ring. eclipse starts Hello. at nine. Ready or not, here we come. Ah! Eclipse? Yeah. It starts at nine? That's what it's, the interweb says. You make it sound like a movie. That's what people like. Act. There's a three o'clock showing and a 525 yep. and a 610. We don't know if. Uh, Pouring on the clips is good or not, we'll dark. find out. If it gets dark while we're pouring our foundation, I'm going to be a little bit miffed. 
That'll be pretty funny. All right, coffee for Alyssa. Does it feel good to be hours away from being done with this? I like the way you put that. <laughs> yes, it does. It feels good to be hours away from never having to do this again. <laughs> I've got to get these garage door bucks solidified. So yeah, we got to get this one installed and we got to extend the plywood to the top. This one plywood needs to go to the top. I confirmed with our engineer this morning that that uh, eighth dowel back there, we can live without it. So good news. Um, I need to make some trimmings to the buttress buck and get that installed and the sewer and the boiler Thermopex penetrations need to be cut, and then we also need to cut a penetration for the garage drain. Lots to do. We have a neighbor who helped us last evening, and uh, he's volunteered to help us again today just to get us pour ready, and then also just to be on hand in case something dramatic or exciting happens during the pour. So I think I should probably focus on getting these penetrations done because especially the sewer, that actually needs to go in a fairly precise location. Can't just go willy-nilly. With the sewer running out of the building, we have such a close amount of drop from the corner where that main is gonna originate to the septic that we need to get this pretty darn precise. Psst. What are you doing in there? Oh crap, the concrete truck's on its way an hour early. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Ready or not. <laughs> the metal strapping, I don't know where it ended up. Okay. It might be in the bed of the pickup, which is down on the highway. So we're sort of scrambling, which sucks. Maybe, maybe an extra day wouldn't have been a good idea. I don't know. Nothing like pouring before you're ready, huh? Oh yeah. T two and a half. These two and a half? No. Those are twos. These must be three. Don't know where the two and a halfers are, here's threes. Those are threes, that's what I meant. Long screws. Okay. Sorry, didn't mean to be so specific. Carol Swapia. Justin, working on the upper plywoods? Uh, I think so far pouring on the Eclipse means it's gonna be stressful as heck. Yep. Did you get it in? I don't know, I'll have to find out. Push hard. I'm trying not to break the foam. Okay, pull it back out. Freaking hurts my hands. Anything? You're there. Go a little. That's good. So it turns out, well, it takes the guys a while to pump the walls, so I thought we were gonna be stressing out more, and it seems that we do have a little time to work out these last kinks, and they're able to pump where we're not working. Say 
it again? Thirty-four. You could come down probably a little bit. I think this is the this ass part, fine. This looks better. Oh yeah. So what we're gonna have to do? What's I'm up? To go up there Good. Just yeah. Is there anything else off hand that you can think of? Uh, so these L's I'm actually building now need to go in the corner between the buttress and the wall. I'll build these now and then they just need to be anchored into the wall and the buttress makes sense. Okay. okay. Bye concrete truck. Thank you. Numbers. I have no idea what they're saying or if it's good or bad or what or ah. <laughs> it's fourth and it's fourth and six. Like they got a, it's like you know, end of the game, fourth down, six yards to go. <laughs> Is it just me or is it looking eclipsy right now? <laughs> That's it. This is what people are traveling like all over the world to see. This is the eclipse right now. Pretty exciting. <laughs> this man says it's eclipsing. They said it's at 1016 is the fullest it's gonna be for us here. Is that right now? Yeah. This is it? It feels like we just kind of went back like 30 minutes. So these guys are almost done with the um, west or the east wall. So we're gonna start floating. Yep, looks like we're two blocks from the top over here. Last truck coming in. All right, so the challenge now is to get this uh, concrete down to the right level. The problem is the top of the wall is not the level that we're after. We need to be about a quarter inch off the top of the wall and we need to be level. So, you know, no big deal. Gonna have to get everybody up here floating these walls pretty quick here. This pump's gonna outrun us pretty quick, so ready to go. It's actually pretty wet now that I can get the cream to the top. It's hard when the nubbins are hidden, can't even see yep. your reference. In hindsight, you should have just cut these walls. We're nearing the end. Don't throw concrete on my buttress. 
So they're all done pumping the walls. They have some extra and it looks like they're making cow patties for us. We're cutting all the nubbins off the tops of these blocks because they're a pain in our butts. Justin is kind of screeding to get to the tops of the blocks and then Jesse and I are doing the finished troweling. All that work I did with the laser level up here yesterday, absolutely pointless. We're trying to remember our measurements and we're floating about a quarter inch down from the tops of the blocks in most places on the wall. My concrete truck, thank you. Ready for some money? Yeah, I've been kind of sticky here. Hey. Wow, heat's kicking in. Yep. Nope. Huh? Justin, do you want to go to lunch with us? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do think everything went really well. We didn't have a single blowout. Yeah, so the <laughs> pump guys had a lot to say about ICFs, both Did good they? and bad. But really, a lot of what it was, was just kind of like customers not really understanding their product and thinking that this stuff's just like ballistically strong yeah. and you can just do whatever you well, want. Well, it has its limitations. They ran into a customer who uh, built his own ICFs, like uh, that type of deal. Yep. And they wouldn't even pump the walls because um, yeah. they apparently like started to pump it and the form started falling apart wow. instantly and the scaffold was too weak and yeah, so it's... just a real mess. So they hadn't run into light form before, but they looked everything over and kind of gave it a test, you know, real quick. And, and they said it was really good. They're really glad that they pumped this one. The scaffold was solid. The walls held no problem. All of our bucks were good, no problem. So I think this was easy money for them, honestly. Yeah. Before this is like perma permanent. We have our laser level set up and we're just checking for any high spots. It's flirting with the blue, Jesse. Nice. That's what we like. This all looks really flat. Floating these ain't gonna happen. These are pretty much rock hard already. So now we gotta find a use for a bunch of unflattened cow patties. Well, we had a nice relaxing lunch, got to visit with our friend Justin, which was nice. And now we're back on site. And I want to take a little while and just kind of go around and check on things, kind of see how things turned out. Look for anything that maybe we didn't spot during the pour, you know, that might be an issue. Something <clears throat> that I've learned during concrete pours, stuff like this, you usually regret later because this concrete sets up and then it's like impossible to get your forms off. Because these turnbuckles and things, or cam locks and turnbuckles are rented, they need to be clean. So we tried to keep them clean during the pour. It's amazing how easy it is to wash concrete off when it's wet. Um, so this area over here, we strapped that with a 24 inch piece of plywood. So right in here, we had to cut those ties uh, to get the rebar in. And this all looks just amazing. I'm really glad the trucks came early. It, it worked out. We have tried really hard to avoid these stressful, poor situations where you just have chaos. But as it worked out, there was some kind of bouncing back and forth with the pump guys that allowed us to kind of get caught up. And so we kind of worked on stuff they were going to be working on. And then we tried to get ahead of them a little bit, which with Justin's help, we were able to do. We got all the bracing on and everything. No lifting at all on these blocks. I mean, that block is flat on the footing, which is perfect. So all this spray foam did its job. Looks really good. Um, our pump guy said that's probably one of the most common 
issues with ICFs when they're not properly secured to the footing is you start putting mud in there and the form starts to float, which is not good. This did prove to be a little difficult here. This buck, if you remember, is sitting on the frost wall. And then this vertical buck is actually sitting on this buck. And then we strapped across this on both sides, over and under. This was actually bulging slightly because we hadn't actually fastened it to this buck. It was just fastened to the ICF, which didn't have a tie in it. But we threw a few two inch screws in there and I think we were able to save it. It's got a tiny, very tiny little bulge right there. All the vertical strapping worked. Everything actually looked really good. I mean, there's a little bit of concrete weeping through these holes. But I mean, honestly, you can tell how well sealed this wall is because there's no concrete on that wall whatsoever that wept. One thing we definitely learned is that you got to get these castellations off the, the keys. You got to get them off there because you can't rod this or screed it. And if you can't screed it, then floating it's just an absolute nightmare. You can kind of see how patchy or blotchy all this mud is. That's because we, there was keys on here and something I identified pretty fast. We had to drill a hole in here with the hole saw so they could shove the pump down in here to get mud back in this corner. And then they could feed it in through the end with the pump. But the problem is when they did that, this kind of mushroomed out. And this mushroom of concrete right here, if it would have hardened, I don't know that we would ever got this piece of wood off of here. So you gotta identify stuff like this while it's happening to make sure that you can remove your form. So I came around here and removed all this mud and pushed this mud back down in the hole made sure it's nice and clear so it's amazing <laughs> once that concrete sets up whatever it sets up in on or around it's not going anywhere this corner we had this is probably the one we we if you will we screwed up more than anything we cut so many ties over here and it was just on the upper row so we strapped over bottom row to bottom row no problems same here no problems at all the bracing and scaffold system worked surprisingly well. The one thing I have to admit, and I don't even know that I want to check. <laughs> I have to check. We did not have time to check the walls for plumb and straight during the pour. We did a lot of work before the pour started, but once the pour was going, it, it wasn't an issue. I was so busy running around trying to keep up with a lot of chaotic problems that I just didn't have time to, to make that check. So at this point, it is what it is, and we'll deal with it at the plates. But I'm hoping that Alyssa and I can do some measuring, and I'm hoping <laughs> somehow we dodged a bullet and everything is still straight and square. It looks good to the eye, but it could be off a little bit. I'm actually waiting to get on the phone with Lightform just to kind of check in with them and let them know how things went. So I figured I'd run around with the laser and kind of just check and see how we did. I know things are really good. Um, Alyssa and Justin did a fantastic job. This concrete went off really fast. So this mud, when it was first top of wall, was too wet almost to float. Just get a lot of cream, which most people like. But in this case, it was hard to float because we were trying to float between inside the wall, which is always hard. If you can, it's so much better to float to top of form. Then you can screed to top of form, float to top of form. So much easier. So at first it was a little gooey and then pretty quick, Alyssa was like, it's getting hard to work, Jesse. Need you to come check this stuff, make sure everything's good. And I'm like, okay. And then I mean, probably 15 minutes went by and I was able to do a little bit of just like taking the high spots out of it. But otherwise, this guys did a fantastic job. So we'll, we'll find out how good we did when it comes time to set the plates on top here. I think people have already asked and I'll, I'll kind of spoiler upcoming videos, but why aren't there J bolts in the top of the walls? Um, our engineers who are working with primarily on the timber frame, but they do whole house engineering. They've been directing on this because we're using such a large plate. It's, it's going to be roughly three inches by 14 inches at this point is so big that Putting J bolts in the concrete wall is easy at the time. It's extremely difficult to get the plates where they need to be down the road, locating them with the bolts. Their recommendation was don't put anything in the top of the wall. That's been stated multiple times on our plans. And so we're actually going to be drilling later and putting in what's called a Titan HD anchor. It's a concrete anchor. And I think they're half inch, big, big anchors, big drill bit. Um, but their feeling is that it's worth it to make sure that your plates are in the right spot. 
and then you can drill and put the anchor exactly where it needs to go. I thought this was worth sharing. This is how proud I am of everybody. This is 37 feet from our laser and it's dead level. So just spent about an hour on the phone with Lightform. It's really, I just can't even say how helpful it has been. I mean, part of, the part of the conversation was why we chose Lightform. And it's gonna sound a little cheesy, but part of the reason is they answered their phone. Alyssa and I feel really strongly that as an owner builder, it's, it's so critical that you have partners who don't just sell you stuff. We need somebody who will help us, you know, maximize their product. In fact, even Lightform said, well, the block's only as good as the person building it. And we would say, well, true, but it's also as good as the company's support for their own product, you know? Can't just stick this stuff on a street corner and expect people to figure it out, especially owner builders like us. So we're very thankful that we chose Lightform. The support was huge. Even just knowing when things are okay. We went through all this entire thing yesterday and then this morning. Unfortunately, it was during the pour, but just kind of looked through things really quick and uh, Casey was like, yep, looks good. Yep, looks good. That's so reassuring to us. I mean, we're dumping thousands of dollars of our hard-earned money into this project and it's just nice when somebody can look at it with you and say, you're good. So feel pretty good about it. Um, Lightform's of course happy. The pour went well, their product looks good. They said they weren't worried about it, which I believe them because they do this stuff all the time. We weren't really stressed necessarily. It was just that the trucks came a couple hours early. Uh, Alyssa and I really put a lot of effort into and so did our help, uh, Justin, making sure things were strong and reinforced. And I think I have to say that if by some chance the pump guys are watching this video, uh, Daryl and Billy and I think Josh. Now you guys are as important to the success of this project as anybody. Um, we've loved working with you guys. You've been really helpful. Your knowledge, again, their knowledge of pouring and ICFs and how to get concrete in the right places at the right time. And it's as, as critical to the success of this project as everything else. So thank you for all your help. Um, Alyssa's resting now, thankfully. She's finally getting some shut eye, I think, just taking a break and not being filthy for once. So I think we're going to rest tonight, tomorrow, housekeeping day. We've got a lot of stuff to catch up on. We're going to leave the scaffolding up here because I think it'll help us get our plates on. We might be able to do the plates before we do the slab which seems kind of backwards maybe. We'll have to see, but I really would, don't want to take the scaffolding down if we don't have to in order to get the plates on. So we'll kind of chase that down, see if that's going to work for us. But um, tomorrow we're going to catch up. Thanks for joining us for this hopefully not too chaotic video, although it was pretty chaotic. And uh, I'm not sure. I think probably a couple days we'll start back up on this. We'll be tearing a lot of stuff down, cleaning stuff up, and then starting work on the slab. and bracing. It's been good knowing you. It was a lot of fun. And by fun, I mean my sense of humor wasn't that great. But you've done a good job. I will not fault you for your service. And now it's time to make room in here for the slab. So I think it's best if the person with the tape is in that corner and then okay. like, this person just moves a I agree. Bunch. Fifty two eleven and five eighths. Fifty two eleven and seven eighths. That's the exact measurement of that one, isn't it? Hmm. Where is our little penetration? Ha ha. <laughs> so the sticky stuff. It's barely sticking and our tar caulk is barely dry so I think we made a good call with screws
if you want to detach it from the scaffold brackets, then we'll take the bridge off and then you can just work your way back. Okay. Hold on. If you can go back one, one step maybe. No. Okay. Now tip up. Oh, okay. Hold on, don't go behind that. Go on my side. Okay. Good. Good. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Still works. Apparently, Alyssa set her alarm so she'd be able to get up by noon. Oh, for brawl. Wonder why we're supposed to talk to Fabral today. Got it. Okay, got it. So that one you probably have to pull down there and tip up and tip down to me. How does it feel to never walk on that scaffold again? It's bittersweet. Right? It starts I like getting. That we don't have to run up and down anymore though. Uh, yeah, now we gotta build a slab and then at least we'll have a flat surface to run around on. Yeah. We can put real scaffold on. I can see why people pour a slab first. The temptation is really strong to build on a slab because everybody can build on flat ground. We have some thoughts on why we did not build a slab first, but different video. Different video. All right, so one last scaffold plank to come down. Yep. And then I think we can start taking the braces off. Yeah. Um, the nice thing is we can lean the ladder against the wall now, so uh, yeah. that makes life like 50 times yeah. easier. It's still gonna suck over here on the uneven ground, but it's better it than wants, nothing. We'll do it again. So many screws around here. That's a lot of lumber. Holy crap. That's still like the same load, right? No wonder we're broke. You right? Yeah.
What are we gonna do with all this? We're building a timber frame. Yeah. What the heck are we gonna do with all this freaking lumber? How's it going? Toasty. Yeah? At least you found a shady spot to work, huh? That's huge, yeah. Keep working in the shade the hat off. until you have to. Uh, yeah. Maybe by the time you get done with this wall, the shade will be around the corner. That's my plan. I'm gonna work down here. Right yeah. Down here. We have learned. Right now. We have learned our lesson about shade. Yeah. I How do kind of. I do. I'm doing pretty good. Heat's definitely getting me today. I'm super sluggish, but yep. still moving. Trying to keep up. Don't forget. We have all this wonderful plating to remove on the bottom. Can we take that off? We have to. Okay, yeah. cool. That's what's blocking the footing drain. Yes, okay. On the inside. So I think we can get all this removed tonight. It's my goal. Yeah. Hoping was hoping to be able to do the exterior perimeter drain tonight too, but I think it may be uh cool off and have dinner night. Trying to keep moving every day. I don't know, sometimes when the sun sets morale picks up yeah. again and we like keep moving it so looks super shaky right now camera's chicken i am very like yeah i can't drink enough water probably right. should be drinking take gatorade a break and eat some salt or something yeah or just take a break and eat dinner and sleep <laughs> and the air conditioning all right back to the grind what's your middle name fast fast is your middle name accurate it's not my middle name accurate. fast is my middle name <laughs> i would agree with that It's nice to be working on ground level again, that's Look at sure. that. Yeah. Ground level and shade. Oof, speaking my language. I was just telling Jesse how when the slab is poured and it starts to cool off a little bit like the weather, we will be completely unrecognizable. That's it. We'll be back to our gremlin, our shading mossy gremlins. Yeah, tans are gonna go away. Tans, what little tan we have. This first layer of whalers was really funny. We tried to follow the, I think it was the Zont instructions to a T. So we drilled, we attached the lumber to the Zont, and then we tied it on with wire. Now we have these beautiful wires sticking out of our walls. Turns out we didn't need the wires, nor did we need to screw the whalers on. So undoing this last row is turning out to be quite a bit of work, but everything's more tolerable on the ground and in shade. waste 25 bucks huh. use these screws once right you never reuse concrete screws do you think that concrete walls are kind of like babies you have to teach them how to walk huh. like we just and we're like taking off the training reels right now and we're yeah crash. i think i i didn't really ask the plant if our concrete was well trained Alyssa means business. Bring this little wire cutters back here is the very last zonk. Oh, yes. 
And then we will have. Dun, dun, dun. Well, you can check that off the bucket list, eh? Yeah, wow. Looks so much more spacious in here. Yeah, it does. It? Wowza. And the risk of smashing your head has gone down exponentially. A lot. Yeah, that's nice too. Mm. I don't know. I think, like, with everything, it feels really good to reach a new milestone. Heck yeah. I think we're going to get 1400 bucks back when we turn those. The very last Zonts. Boom. We successfully dismantled the entire Zont and Zuckel bracing system in about six hours. With the brake, probably. With brake, and we had some other stuff happen today. Yeah. I had to deal with the backhoe. Yeah, it looks so good. Stuff here. like that. I'm pretty proud of us. So I think we did fantastic. We removed the whole system in six hours. I think I was saying that it looks like a hurricane of foam went through here, but that's kind of not funny because there are people who are really right now being affected by a hurricane, Harvey. So I guess if you're watching this, be safe. We hope you're okay. We hope you didn't lose too much stuff, but we can complain about the heat. So you guys get to complain about hurricanes. It's all good. Like it's all fair game, but I hope you guys are safe. So we have to unload the backhoe. Oh, yeah. And if we can load that and unload it, that's a pretty good day. I don't know. I don't know how you're feeling. There's probably a good hundred boards on the backhoe plus okay. that. It's like 150 boards. Do you so want to do that today? We have to. Okay. Yeah, it's got to happen. Okay. I think that that's a pretty good day. And then you need to feed yep. me enchiladas <laughs> or something because my energy is really happen. low. Yeah. I'm starting to feel a little nauseous. So yeah, I was actually feeling a little pukey a minute ago and I stood up and went like, did one of these like, whoa. And it wasn't like a, I'm lightheaded. It was like, I think I'm going to pass out. So let's shut it down before we get shut down.